It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... The Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life. On this Monday, October 25th, 2021. Hello again, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Another Monday, baby. Love Mondays. My son was complaining this morning. I hate Mondays. I told him, son, I used to feel the same. But now I love Mondays. Why? Because I get to do this show, sit in this chair, talk to all of you through that camera on this set, living the dream. And we got a lot to talk about. Last two months, let's be honest, the slate, in particular in the UFC, has been a little com si com sa. But my friends, the next two weeks, we are getting some primo action. UFC 267 and 266 back to back. It's been a while since we got numbered events back to back. And back then, I think it was 89-90. Nothing like we're about to get this coming weekend and the following weekend. But we got a lot to discuss from this past weekend. Tons of news going on. Tons of events this past weekend. All happening at the same time. My wife was out of town this weekend. And usually I love the fact that the events are happening at the same time. I love the fact that they're all happening in the afternoon. Like usually this past Saturday would be a dream scenario for me. Fun, different screens, different action, afternoon, it's not 1 a.m. The problem was they were all happening at like 7 p.m. on Saturday, climaxing at that time. That's prime dinner time, bath time for the kitties. So I was freaking out. There was a lot going on. But we got it done, and uh, it was very exciting, and we have a lot to discuss. Before we get to all of that, I do want to remind you that this program is brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Yes, DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today, and please do use the promo code the MMA Hour. That's the MMA Hour. I was about to say Ariel, but it's not. It's the MMA Hour for a special offer when you sign up. Again, that's code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Please do support them because they support us. So later in the show, we're going to be talking to Piotr Jan who's the unofficial UFC bantamweight champion. Of course, he's not the official one because he lost the belt back in March after the illegal knee against Aljamain Sterling. Uh, he fights Corey Sanhagen this weekend, UFC 267. They're going, going back, back to Abu Dhabi. Yes. And it's not one of those Abu Dhabi cards from back in the day where it's like one big fight at the top and then a bunch of other, you know, so-so fights. This is a stack card, my friends. I mean, this is great stuff. Jan Bachovic versus Glover Teixeira at the very top, light heavyweight title fight. Corey Sanhagen versus Piotr Jan for the interim title, which kind of in a weird way feels like the official title fight because in some alternate universe, Jan beats Sterling in March, Sanhagen beats TJ Dillashaw in July. These two guys are actually fighting for the belt. Weird how it all worked out. Of course, it worked out this way because Sterling's neck isn't healed. And uh, he had to pull out. TJ had surgery. Rob Font couldn't take the fight. And so here's Corey Sanhagen versus Jan. Crazy. Dan Hooker versus Islam Makhachev. What a scene that's going to be. Uh, Hamzat Shamayev returning against Li Zhangliang. Marcin Taibura against Alexander Volkov. Magomed Ankalaya versus Volkan Ozdemir. Uh, you got the return of Amanda Hibas. You've got uh, Makwan Amir Khani against Lerone Murphy. I mean, there's just something for everyone on this card. Mikhail Oleg against Shamil Gamzatov. Uh, a lot to like here on this card. I can't wait. And it's an afternoon card, 2 p.m. Eastern main card start on ESPN+. Plus. So we'll talk to Piotr, who's in Abu Dhabi right now at uh, 3.30. We'll talk to Michael Bisping, my good friend, the Count, at 3 o'clock. A lot going on in his life. Looking forward to having him back on the show. It's been a while since I had him on. Of course, he used to be a fixture in the uh, the first iteration of this program. Or is it the third? Is this the third iteration? Because is the AOL version the first iteration, the Vox version, the second iteration, and then the Vox 2.0 version, the third iteration? I think it's fair to say this is the third iteration. I think that's fair. Uh, in any event, we'll talk to Michael Bisping about all the stuff going on in his life at three at two 30. We'll talk to Kevin Lee. Uh, we, we spoke about him a little bit on Wednesday about his suspension Adderall. He's 
uh, posted a couple things on Instagram about that. So we'll talk to Kevin Lee at 2.30. At 2 o'clock, we'll talk to one of my favorite people in combat sports, the one and only, the baddest woman on the planet, Kayla Harrison, who's fighting on Wednesday, October 27th, this Wednesday. Yeah, I talked about UFC. I mean, there's a lot going PFL this Wednesday, the finals on a Wednesday, a rare Wednesday card. I like it. I'm hyped for it. We're going to do the show on Wednesday. You wrap that bad boy up, you watch the PFL Finals. We'll also talk to Clarissa Shields, who will be competing uh, on Wednesday in her second MMA fight. She's arguably the best pound-for-pound female boxer on the planet. She uh, made her MMA debut a couple months ago. She's returning now to fight once again for PFL. So all that to come, and uh, we'll recap the picks with GC as well. First, a couple of thoughts for you on uh, the weekend that was in MMA. Of course, the big story, two really big stories. Uh, the first one being Marvin Vittori beating Paulo Costa. Main event, UFC card, decision, victory, went the distance, no controversy. That was Vittori's fight. And of course, all the chatter leading up to the fight, which I think raised the uh, the stakes a little bit, raised the profile of the fight, was Paulo Costa's weight, Bohashinia's weight. He comes in on Wednesday and says, yeah, I'm not going to make this 185 uh, weight limit. Uh, let's do 195. So they agree to that on Wednesday. And then Thursday night we find out, yeah, I'm not going to make 195. Let's do 205. And then he shows up at 204 and a half on Friday morning and does the classic heel move where he actually stands on the scale and like wipes off his hands like, hey, you know, ain't no thing. It was easy. It was fantastic. He has this smugness to him. And is somewhat, it feels like, oblivious to all the criticism, all the hate. And it makes him a perfect heel. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Rick the Model Martel from back in the day with the arrogance, you know, uh, little perfume thing. Where he just is this good-looking guy, this hulk of a man. Everyone kind of hates him. And yet, uh, you want to watch him because he's, you know, chiseled out of stone. And he doesn't show up and and do what he has to do. He He, you know, gets reprimanded for poking someone's eye. Uh, he then like tries to, uh, you know, make his case as to why point shouldn't be taken away. That was a fun scene. I thought it was the perfect call by Jason Herzog. We need to see more of that. By the way, he did actually warn him a couple times leading up to that point. Even if he didn't, I think you need to be taking points away from that. Enough is enough already. And so this guy's trying to bend the rules all over the place. Um, and people love to hate him. Now we should say, it wasn't cool what he did. Not fair to Vittori at all. I saw some people saying, oh, you guys were applauding Nick Diaz a couple weeks ago, and yet you're reprimanding Paulo Costa. First of all, I don't think anyone was really applauding Nick Diaz for trying to move the weight up. But let's not pretend Nick Diaz and Paulo Costa have done the same in the sport. Let's not pretend that the sweat equity that Nick Diaz has invested in the sport of MMA is that of one Paulo Costa. It's not even close. And so, yeah, if you want to say that one guy has a longer leash than the other, if you want to say that we're a little more lenient towards one guy than the other, yeah, sure. I think Nick Diaz has earned that. All that, be and, and by the way, let's not pretend that, you know, this whole world that we live in, favorites aren't being played, right? I mean, one guy gets cut for doing something, the other guy doesn't get cut just in this organization, but in every walk of life, in your job, it's just the way it is. There is no meritocracy. It isn't an even playing field. But Nick Diaz did say that he was uh, not going to make that weight days before fight week. He didn't show up to Las Vegas and say, nah, I'm not going to do it. We only just found out about it on fight week. Costa did it exactly that way. He showed up and was like, nah, I'm not going to make it. So that's a bit of a crummy move. 20 pounds bigger than 15. Not the biggest difference, but it's still something. Changed it twice from 195 to 205 as well. Diaz just went straight to uh, to 185. And so the whole thing was, you know, was very heel-like, but it was crummy as well. I mean, it, it's it's not the way you should do business. Now, Dana White says his next fight's going to be at 205. Historically, he hasn't had trouble. He's, he's gigantic. He hasn't had trouble. Like, he hasn't missed. But, like, this is blatant. And so there should be some sort of punishment. I can't believe he only had to give up 20% of his purse. I would have vouched for 40 to 50%. Um, but in any event, that's the way it went down. Vittori has often claimed that I don't give him his respect, that I don't give him his shine, that I don't give him his love. He has said this time and again over the years. And so here I want to say very clearly 
and to the camera, respect my man. You handled that whole week like a total pro. And I would argue that if maybe you handled other controversial moments, sticky moments like that in the past, more people would be on your side. It doesn't matter though. People love you now. Stick with this. This is the Marvin Matori we want to root for. This is the Marvin Matori that we want to see succeed. You didn't complain. You could have complained. No one would have, would have, would have hated on you, but grudged you if you complained. You didn't. You said, I just want to fight the first time they tried to change it. Said the same the second time. Got in his face, rightfully so, and then went out, took his best shots. He was clearly bigger than you, and you won fair and square. Respect. Handled it with class afterwards. You know, obviously you were a little bit annoyed, but that's the Marvin Vittori that we want to root for. This is a good Marvin. This is a babyface Marvin Vittori. This is quite the, the, the turn for him. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, really impressed with how he handled the whole thing. Uh, he saved that main event. There is no main event if not for Marvin Vittori. But it's just in the past, sometimes he has been so fiery and, uh, you know, a little, it, it, the, the behavior is a little off-putting. It's hard to get behind someone like that. Even after the Izzy fight in June, saying that he could beat him again, like it's hard to get behind that. It feels delusional. This feels like a guy who's a hardworking mofo, who goes out, who does the job, who doesn't complain, who's going to beat you even if you try to cheat. If you try to poke him, if you try to come in heavy, he's going to go out there, take your best shot and win. That's someone that the Italian MMA community, that's someone that the MMA community can get behind and be proud of. And so respect, my man. You won't hear any negativity out of me. I don't even think I was ever negative towards him in the past, but he, he seems to think I don't like him. Um, that was impressive stuff. And so that was one big story. I don't know where he goes from here, obviously, because he has the two losses against Izzy. He's not going to get another shot against Izzy anytime soon. Sean Strickland could be a name out there. Uh, we might be talking to, to Sean later this week, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so he's in a tough spot, but just get wins at this point. Just stay active, get wins, good things will come. The UFC will hopefully take care of you. The other big story, of course, Fyodor Elmenenko turning back the clock, looking amazing in Moscow, finishing Big Tim Johnson in a matter of seconds, couple minutes. Amazing scene in Russia. Incredible to see that again. And I know that he wants to talk about belts now, Ryan Bader rematch. I say just go for the biggest fights. Like, did anyone care that that was a non-title fight? No. No one cares if Fyodor wins the belt or heavyweight title or not. It doesn't really mean all that much. Let's be honest. Let's see him fight Overeem. Let's see him fight JDS. Let's see him fight Josh Barnett. Let's see some classic legend fights with Fyodor in his final days as an active MMA fighter. That would be fun. I could get behind that. Do we want to see the Bader fight? Like, what does that all mean? We could worry about that later. Uh, Coker tells me he's going to fight again. So that's cool. How did you not get nostalgic watching that? How did you not feel something inside of you watching that? In that stadium, with that crowd, people, Habib is there taking pictures. I mean, it was just amazing. Um, he is a special guy who still elicits a different kind of emotion out of all of us. So that was going on. UFC going on. Marius Pujanowski is knocking out Bombardier in 15 seconds. That's going on. Rico Verhoeven is being taken into the depths of hell with a massive cut. That's going on. He ends up winning. A uh, story came out that his face, his uh, face ID didn't work on his iPhone afterwards because his face was all mangled afterwards. Uh, so that was pretty amazing. Later on in the night, we had Shakur Stevenson and Jamel Herring. Uh, Shakur Stevenson looking great, representing Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Ryzen in the middle of the night. I mean, there was so much going on. And in the midst of all of that, America's former former team, uh, the team of the 90s, was able to punch its ticket to the World Series. And I'm sure uh, our man GC was very excited about that. So let us check in with Mr. GC and get his take on not so much the Atlanta Braves beating the Dodgers, but his bets. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. The Cinderella run has come to an end. Unfortunately, he has officially punched in his, uh, his first losing weekend as a member of the team. Is GC there or is he, uh, is he, oh, okay. There he is. Uh, hello, GC. What do you have to say for yourself, my friend? Raise me the world series. Yeah. How about that, man? Yeah. Yeah. The bets, uh, I mean, Congratulations, I, I, by the way. You're yeah, you're rocking the '95 yeah, shirt. You yeah. know, looks like one of those like new vintage shirts that you just. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's from 1995. Legit. You, you know, I went to Urban Outfitters or something. Yeah, like one of those. Yeah, yeah. You just. Uh, uh, nah, this is this is real vintage. It's it's held up. Well, How old so. were you in '95? 
uh, two. Damn. That is wild. I've officially yeah. reached that point where I ask people how old they were in the 90s and say, damn. Because I was. Yeah, I have no grade. recollection of, of the World Series. You have no recollection of the 90s teams? Nah, not really. Damn. Yeah. Could we, I mean, could we give a shout out to, you know, the two Canadians who are leading the charge here? We've got the GM, Montreal Zone, Alex Anthopoulos, who's doing great things before he goes and runs the Expos in a couple of years. And then, of course, Freddie Freeman doing the damn thing as well. I mean, I mean, I got nothing bad to say about either of those guys, especially not Freddie. Freddie's, I don't even think... I mean, Freddie's a king in Atlanta at this point. He's a legend. I don't even think Freddie's born. Uh, I don't think he's ever lived in Canada, yet World Baseball Classic, he reps Canada. You know this, right? Because of his mom. I didn't know this. What kind of a fan are you? California. Yeah, exactly. You didn't know that he reps Canada? Nah, no, no clue. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, congratulations. We're pulling for you guys. Uh, although I do like, I mean, my guy Carlos Correa. Like, yeah, we're, you, we're pretty you got much a boy BFF. on the Astros. I mean, yeah, but they won recently. These guys didn't, and I'd love to see Anthopoulos uh, get a World Series head. I thought he got a raw deal in Toronto, but it'll be fun. Yeah, I, we're, we're happy to see him win the NLCS. Yeah, fingers crossed they can get it done in the World Series, but but we'll see what happens. Again, it's all coming up, GC, uh, except for this past weekend, first yep. losing weekend. So what first happened? Tell weekend. us. I mean. I mean, it had to happen eventually. Uh, I've said it on the show before. We don't we don't get too high. We don't get too low in this. Um, you know, we can't just keep delivering winning weekends every single weekend. Right. Um, so, you know, we we finished down two and a half units. Uh, we're still up eleven point two three since we started doing this thing. But uh, yeah, we just a couple of things didn't go our way. Um, you know, we started off with the singles. The singles went all right. Uh, Lavinia Souza, Souza, that was just. Uh, I mean that was just a mistake laying money on that. Should have uh should have never done that. Then uh Rodriguez, Robocop. I mean, if you watch the Tremendous. fight, that was an incredible fight. I mean, I think that was some crazy judo from him, but he gets the iron turtle. And then Vittori, I mean, you just talked about it, all the respect in the world to him. Uh unbelievable week from him dealing with all that and then coming out and fighting like that. Um yeah, I mean, even if even if they gave the point back to Costa, I mean, it was still forty eight forty six on every scorecard. He's he still wins wins by the decision so i mean that, that was gonna win either way bellator you just talked about him fyodor uh <laughs> nice we, uh, well done yeah I, I mean i never i never should have doubted the goat there i, know, I, that was I, crazy. I, went, I went with tim johnson on that one that was crazy um you ne- listen there are a few th- I'm, I'm no expert but fyodor fighting in russia you just can't go i, mean, I should i shouldn't have the fact it. that I mean, he was I listed, listen. the fact that he was listed as a dog was crazy to me. I know, man. It was it was the age. Tim Johnson, yeah. he looked good lately. I mean, but yeah, I mean, all class from Fyodor too. I mean, it was impressive. When he gets the K, you know, he doesn't go crazy. Yep. He doesn't get down and start hammer fisting it him or anything. Beautiful. Yeah, it was it was something else. The parlays, the parlays is what hurt. Um, the Minikov, Vitaly Minikov. I know, but that was broken. Hand. That was messed up. I mean, that was bad luck. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah, sometimes yeah. you just don't yeah. get the bounces your yeah. way. That's that's just the name of the game. You know, if, if he ends up not breaking his hand, if he ends up winning that fight, we're talking about another profitable weekend. So it was really down to that one, huh? It was actually down to that and uh, Sung Woo Choi. If you know, Sung Woo Choi gets that incredible knockdown against yeah. Caceres, looks like he's about to finish him. The illegal knee, Caceres is able to clear his head, comes back, tremendous, gets finish. the submission. I mean, yeah, that submission that hurts seeing seeing uh, seeing Choi go for the tap because that. That's cemented in the losing weekend. If if Troy gets the win there, we're we're talking about another winning weekend. Did you so. watch? You did you watch? She knew she knew they were on, but she no, she did not watch. Yeah, no. One of these days um, when Zombie comes back, maybe. Yeah, I mean the Koreans they they did go over two, so maybe yeah. it was maybe it was better that she didn't watch. But yeah, Troy wins, Warmenikov wins. We got another winning weekend, but that's the breaks, man. That's uh, so. What did that uh, What did that knock you down to? We finished the weekend down two and a half units, 2.5. So now we're at 11.23 up on the weekend. Um, yeah, as you can see there. There it is. Wow, look at that. That's nice. Um, is it inappropriate for me to ask, like, in terms of actual money, what you're up or down? Or is that, is that I don't know, what's the etiquette? Yeah, I mean, if we want to break the fourth wall, yeah. yeah. I, I do $50 units. So, okay. Uh, $125 down this weekend. That's not so bad. No, because, I mean, look at it. Like, we're still up. Yeah. You know. 11.23. Yeah. Um, so it, was, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought from afar. It's hard to, like, keep up with everything, but I don't think you should feel so bad. I mean, how many how many have you done now? Five in a row? Six in a row? Five, we went I? four profitable, one, and now this losing one. So four and one for winning weekend. Okay. It's only been five weeks, huh? No, nah, and, 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 you know, 
we had you, you just mentioned it, the the rough cards. We we got through the yeah. rough cards. We almost made it out with with all winning weekends, but now we're on to the pay per view cards. Now now we get the back to Abu Dhabi. We get we get two sixty eight in Madison Square Garden. You there's a lot more you know about these fighters. You you can actually you know I feel like I feel like these cards are a better opportunity to be able to win money. Now as far as this week is concerned, are we going to do PFL on Wednesday? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, so I'm going to have to do a parlay because everything's so juiced. I mean, Kayla Harrison is minus 3,000. Like, she's going to win the fight. Right. Uh, you know, Clarissa Shields is is minus 400. Well, well is there uh, something to be said for just not touching those? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could avoid them. Um, but, I mean, I just feel like Kayla Harrison inside the distance is, like, I feel like that's that's going to hit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I have What is that, by the way? Do you know what that is? It hasn't come out okay. yet. Still, really? It's like two days away. The fight not to go to decision is minus 900. So I would imagine her winning inside the distance is going to be like minus 850. Okay. Minus 800. But it, it could be better than that. I mean, Usman inside the distance was only like minus 350. Wait, was, Usman or Magomedov? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that was like a... That was a gimme. I mean, yeah. There's there's no no such thing as a lock, but that's about as close as you could get to it. Kayla Harrison's going up against Taylor Guardado. Uh, Kayla's 11-0. Guardado is three and one. I can't wait. I mean, this is her last PFL fight on her contract. She might resign. I just, I'm dying to see her fight some tougher competition. You know, get out of 155, yeah. go down to 145, and now let's go. This has been a bit of a, uh, and I have no issues with it whatsoever, but a bit of a boxing start to her career where she's just fighting a bunch of people that she's clearly better than. Right, build up the record. Over yeah, there. but uh, now I want to see her actually. I'm excited for this interview today, man. I want to hear what she has oh, yes. to say. I mean, I know she's not going to give any too much away, but uh, yeah, man, this free agency is going to be crazy. Fascinating. Clarissa Shields as well. Uh, by the way, speaking of uh, very interesting and fascinating things, couldn't help but notice uh, we changed the uh, the Twitter, Avi. The new Twitter profile. Picture. Yes. Yeah, we got uh, NY Dallas, I think is his name. I think it's Dallas underscore NY. Dallas underscore NY. Legend. Yeah. Yeah, That's shout out to Dallas. Yeah. I mean, he uh, he did the work, and we have it. Yeah, but I believe we do here. We have the. Uh, there it is. There it is. Oh wow! Oh, look at that. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. yeah so uh, I love that. I mean, yeah, you've been harping on it. You just wouldn't drop. You didn't. You didn't change the uh, the Instagram one though. No. Just the uh, just the Twitter, and you're holding what looks like. I mean, shout out to corporate yeah, give Jake him an inch, man. back in the day. You didn't have to meet the mic there on that one. I feel like that was a little excessive, Frankie. Uh, this is the old uh, Helwani no nose. No one did that. <laughs> and this is the old Helwani nose trophy. And that, it appears as though, is what you are holding in the picture. Let's see the picture once again, if we can. Um, the one of you holding the, uh, I mean, that's it. I mean, an all-time edit. That that could not have taken seconds at this point. Like, we have to take, you bring this up right and now. Someone's going to bribe us. Someone's going to bribe you. Bellator Burks would be a great one, too. <laughs> I don't know after this weekend. I mean, we get the losing weekend in Bellator. I look like oh, a schmuck man. after that. Bellator Burks. That would be incredible. Um, I do also, speaking of the internet, I have to just make a confession. I, I spoke about this uh, last night. You, have, you guys are familiar with the Island Boys? I knew this was going to come. I up. can't I was gonna stop. Bring it up to you. I was going to bring it up to you because we're going to Fight Island. Oh, my God. I, I, I should have done it. Oh. I do a thing with your friend Troy, TST. Yeah. We, I'll actually be watching it with him this weekend. Wow. We rock, uh, we rock the Hawaiian shirts and everything. We get real festive for for the Fight Islands. So, Island Boy will be uh, will be in the playlist for some Island time. Boy. Talk about Island Boy. I can't stop singing <laughs> that's it. All, like, those that's all they say. They just keep repeating <laughs> that. And like I, it's, I don't know why it's so catchy. The tattoos on the face is just so unfortunate. Uh, you're right. I should have made that mention. I should have made the reference at the beginning talking. I don't even know if they're going by Fight Island this time, to be honest with you. I don't even think they're calling it that. They might be. Isn't it in an actual arena this That's time? Not, listen, the whole Fight Island thing was a misnomer to begin with. I mean, it was just a place. They've been to that place in the past. It's Yaz Island. I've been to that place. UFC 112 back in 2010. It's the, like, you know how they sold it. And uh, our good friends over at the Worldwide Leader, they loved this. I mean, it was great marketing. I went on every radio show, Golik and Wingo, this, tell us about Five. Is there going to be tiki torches? Is there going to be this? Like, guys, it's in a freaking arena that just happens to be on a place. Like, Montreal is an island. When they go to Montreal, they could call that Fight Island as well. It's one of the great marketing ploys in the history of the UFC. It oh, wasn't man, what we man, thought man, it was going to be. an island, too. Yes, yes. By the way, <laughs> I'm calling 268 Fight Island. They're going to Fight Island. MSG, Fight <laughs> Island. I mean, it is an island. You wouldn't be wrong. 
Uh, yeah, but don't ruin the fun here. Okay, it's, it's Fight Island this weekend. We'll be wearing Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, by the way, why are you wearing Hawaiian shirts for a card in the United Arab Emirates? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Know that. <laughs> I mean, it's tropical. You get the tropical feel. It's it's the island getaway. That's that's what we got to do on on Saturday. Please, uh, can can you can you go to this camera right here? I just need to talk to everyone who's competing at two sixty seven. If you're out there and you're competing this weekend at 267, let me try to find someone. Let me try to find a good candidate, okay? Hold up a sec. Well, you look, I've noticed yes. I've noticed the the view you never want to see is the Hawani with his hand on the laptop. <laughs> you know it's over Something. for you. From, you know it's over for you <laughs> when you get this. This is the this is the death. This is, I mean, we don't need I to mean, talk about what's happened in the past when this. You get the you get the hand happened. on the laptop, things are getting serious. Dan Hooker is a prime candidate. Hamza, not so much. Sanhagen, I can't. I might have to put in a call with Sanhagen. Let me just look down the rest of the card. Um, Lerone Murphy, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I feel like those are the prime candidates. If someone walks out this Saturday to Island Boy, <laughs> <laughs> is there a walkout? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could get Hooker to do. Oh my God, Dad Hooker, Corey Sanhagen. Uh, Zubaira, probably not. Amanda Hebus, maybe she seems like she's a good time. Uh, Hamzad, probably not. Hamzad is not. Uh, um, Sanhagen <laughs> might be the guy, maybe Glover. I mean, I feel like Glover's got a good sense. Jan has a good sense of humor as well. Someone needs to walk out to Island Boy. We talk about Island Boy. I mean, you, you got to be a heavy favorite if you're going to do that. You got, you got to be confident you're going to win. You can't walk out to Island Boy and then get KO'd in the first round. I'm going to take this one step further. If someone walks out to Island Boy, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Magomed Ankalaev. I don't care if it's Virna Janjiroba. I don't care if it's Shamil Gamzatov. <laughs> Virna Janjiroba <laughs> walking out to Island Boy. <laughs> if someone walks out to Island Boy this weekend, you are going up here on the wall. I will take down one of these pictures and you will go up here. So I don't wow. care who it is. Alizeu Zaleski, Dos Santos. I don't care who you are. Someone walks out to Island Boy this weekend. Let the record show. Put this out there. Jedi, get the clip ready. We are putting your face on the wall. And you're probably going to win. So it'll be an action shot. You, hands up, victory pose. Let's go. There it is. What do you think? I mean, that's that's a great deal, especially for these smaller name fighters. I mean, that would be... You'll be immortalized. It'll be you and Fyodor. You and uh, GSP. You and Nathan Diaz. I mean, what, what a deal. All you have to do is come out to... Island boy, talk about island boy. What a song! I love that. Song. Hey, last question before yeah. I get off. Who painted the the nose picture for you? I mean, that is an all time. Which one? Which one? The one right right behind you. This one is a guy a, named Lucas. Yeah, your whole face is just a nose. Hey, by the way, this is Lucas W. Lucas W. Thirty seven, I think is his name. Classic. This is the. I mean, it's all time. But you want to know what the best part about this thing is? This is not even the best part. This is our second studio ever when Vox bought um, MMA Fighting, and then we were like in this little, little, little tiny uh, room. Uh, what was it? Across from B&H on 34th Street. Best part about this right here, this is melted crayon. Oh, wow. This is how, the, I, I have no idea. How <laughs> Makes I, it all the more yes, impressive. This is a melted crayon. And this thing has gone with me from, from AOL to Vox to ESPN and back. Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, the nose is hilarious. The nose is amazing, but the... Uh, the Melted Crayon. By the way, Thug Nose shirts are coming. Just want to let you know. I will order one. All right. Let's get the Clarissa right, Shields. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good stuff. And we'll talk to you on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll talk on Wednesday. There we go. Please, someone come out to Island Boy. If Kayla wants to do it, if, uh, if Clarissa wants to do it, someone needs to come out to Island Boy. It needs to happen. Island Boy. Talk about Island Boy. Island Boy. Island boy. I can't stop. I just can't. I'm sorry. We're going to have to stop. <laughs> have you heard it, Frankie? Have I, I've, I haven't, but I feel like I've gotten a Come good on. You haven't, seen the, you haven't seen the video of the two kids? I will watch it. No, 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 no. Me talking about it, me singing it doesn't do it justice. I don't know what species these individuals are, but they are the most fascinating human beings. I would love to have them on the show. And then, you, and then the problem is you go on their Instagram and you go, you go real deep, and all they're doing is giving people shout-outs. They're like, yo, 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 what's up, what's up? We're here all day giving shout-outs on Instagram. We're here all day. And it's like, what, what is going on? What is, what is up with the youth of America? They've got tattoos all over their face, on their forehead, on their neck, on their body. 
they've got the, their hair is just like, it, it's just, it's amazing. When my wife came home from her trip yesterday, all I wanted to talk to her about was the Island Boys. That's it. I, I can see that. Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Um, we are done with that. Uh, thank you very much to GC. And uh, for now, I'm very excited about this. This has been a long time coming. I have waited for the right moment to have arguably the best female boxer on the planet on this program. Of course, uh, the program wasn't actually going on as of three months ago, but uh, you get the point. I've been waiting to talk to her for quite some time. She is doing an amazing thing. Um, no one has ever done this. Top of their game in uh, boxing, come over to MMA and attempt to dominate there as well. Of course, we've seen MMA fighters go over to boxing and uh, attempt to dominate Conor McGregor. Uh, we've seen it recently with uh, Anderson Silva and whatnot, but what she is doing is uh, unlike anyone, and she returns to action on Wednesday, PFL final. She's not a part of the tournament, but she was successful in her debut a few months ago. She returns on Wednesday against Abigail Montez, who is 2-0. and Of course, I'm talking to the quote now. I'm talking to the one and only, the two-time Olympic gold medalist, Clarissa Shields. Wow, Clarissa, this is an incredible, is this like a, is this like an ENG shoot? What a, what a background this is. This is great. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I make any area look beautiful. So it's Respect. just me and then everything else is like extra, but it's beautiful though. The, I like the clarity. I mean, it's unbelievable. The lighting, the background is a little, I don't know where you are right now, but shout out to the good folks at the PFL <laughs> for this. Uh, I feel like we're actually some kind of a professional show as we're doing this right now. So this is big for me. Shout out to the PFL. Yes. Do you like the PFL? Do they treat you well, Clarissa? Yeah, I don't think I would allow anybody to mistreat me anyway. Let's but the go. PFL treat me very, very well, especially fight week. I have a nice, sweet uh, hotel getting ready for this fight, and everything has been perfect so far. Uh, all right, so then let's talk about your debut. Lots to talk to you about. I'm very excited about this, and thank you for the time. If you know, I asked I asked uh, Coach Wink a couple of weeks ago how he would rate your debut, and he gave you a very favorable weight rating, which I expected for the most part. You know, he's trying to boost the confidence, but you're 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 a professional, and I'm I'm assuming a perfectionist and hard on yourself. How would you rate your debut? I mean, I would rate it as if I had to give myself a grade. Yes. C plus. C plus. Why? C plus. I mean, me coming from a background of boxing, coming to MMA, only training six months and actually getting in there with the brown belt on the ground. The majority of time that I was on the ground, I was supposed to get submitted. That was what was supposed to happen. But to be able to stay calm, keep my composure. I give myself extra credit for keeping my composure and just being able to think through and still go out the third round after losing the first two rounds and still having a confidence like, hey, like throw the right hand sprawl, stay on your feet and, you know, beat this girl down. And to just have that attitude, my MMA debut where I was the main event, which I did not want to be. But it was like to deal with all of that and still come out on top to go into to come into MMA with only one art that I knew and kind of learning on the job with the rest. That's why I give myself a C plus. Like that was a pretty good job, but we definitely went, went back to the drum board and I'm way better than last fight. Why didn't you want to be the main event? I just felt like, you know, we had Anthony Pettis was supposed to fight and the, everybody else was in a tournament you know, near like near went down to the million dollars. And I was like, I don't want to be the main event. I'm only a special showcase. Like, I mean, you're yeah, Clarissa I was Shields, for God's it. sakes. You're one of the best boxers on the planet, regardless of gender. You're a freaking legend. I'm the best boxer, not the best MMA fighter. So what? This is a big deal. Agreed. No, it was a big deal. I just was like, they could have gave me Cole Main or TV opener. I would have been cool with that. I wouldn't have been mad. And I feel like it added more pressure being the main event. Like when I'm main event for boxing, I know everybody's showing to see me and I, you know, I got to do my job. But then it's like being a main event for MMA. It's like millions of people are watching. It's on ESPN. I mean, I, I know what I'm doing, but it's some stuff that I don't know. And I just was like, uh, it was a lot of pressure. <laughs> and I, I appreciate you saying that because you have competed on the highest of stages, the Olympics multiple times and obviously boxing and you're doing incredible things. Could could you tell me, honestly, like when it got to the ground, 
and you're, you're, I mean, you are literally a stranger to losing. It is a very foreign concept to you to lose anything, I would imagine. Are you starting to freak out? Are you like, oh my God, is this actually going to go down like this? You're not freaking out at all? No. Nope. Really? I've been a house... I've been to house fires where I had to save my little brother from being on fire. I'm always like a calm cucumber. I'm straight. When I when I got to the ground, I just was like, all we got to do is I knew how to defend. I didn't, I may not know all the fancy stuff and I may have not, not even been good at getting up. But when you look at the big picture, the big picture is to win the fight. She wasn't winning the fight to me on the ground. She wasn't hurting me. I wasn't allowing her to punch me. She wasn't uh, ground and pounding me. I was able to control her from the bottom. So I just kept thinking to myself, like, okay, next round, we got to throw our right hand a little bit faster, sit a little bit lower and be more alert on the takedowns. But other than that, she wasn't hurting me. And so she wasn't messing up the game plan. Wait a second. You actually really saved your brother from a burning house? Yeah. When was yes, that? Yes, I have. Could you I tell us about that? You threw him out the window? Oh, my God. Yes, we were on a we were on the second floor. My little brother was I was 16. That means he was 13. My mom had passed out in the living room. I guess the stove, whatever she was cooking, it got so strong. She passed out. At first, I got up. The whole house was smoky. I, and this was a new house. I carried her outside. And then when I got outside where I could breathe and I could actually see because it was so smoky, I heard my little brother screaming in the far back room. So I just felt on the on the walls and coughing and everything. And I got to the back room. My little brother was at the window panicking. Like, that's when he was panicking. So when I got to the back room, I grabbed him and we, I tried to open the window and I couldn't get the window open either. Tried to go back to the door that I came in and I couldn't find it. It was so smoky and it was a new house. I couldn't find the door. So we ran back to the window. All he had to do was flip the dang thing and then push the window up. But he was just trying to push it up because he was panicking. So I pushed it up. I, I pushed the window up and I just grabbed him and threw him out. Holy and I fuck. jumped up out, uh, j- jumped out after him. This is back when I was 16 years old. How high off the ground were you? Had to be about six, seven feet. Whoa. Did, so did anyone get hurt? Yeah. Nope. Thanks to me. Damn, okay. Now I understand why you didn't get nervous on the ground there. Yeah, I've, I've been in some crazy situations, but it just like on the ground, stay calm, keep the elbow low. She's trying to get my arm up to try to choke me there. Keep the elbow low, trying to ground and pound me, you know, bumper and grab her. I mean, that's some stuff that we had worked over and over again. But um, it was it was truly a great experience. And, um, and I'm happy I had, had that experience against uh, Brittany. You enjoyed it? Mm-hmm. It was fun. I mean, at first, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be so hard on myself watching the film. But I forced myself not to just watch the highlights of me grounding and pounding her. I'm like, watch the whole fight. So I watched the whole fight of me and Brittany Elkin at least 75 times. Wow. Um, and I'm assuming every time you watch, you you see other things. And so it actually leads me to a question that I've wanted to ask you for a while since you made this transition, but I've been waiting for the right time to talk to you. And I feel like on this set with this lighting and this backdrop, this is the right time. I mean, this is, I don't want this interview to end. This is incredible. Thank you again for coming so correct like this. Um, why are you doing this? You, you have a great career. You're in your prime. You're, you're, you're the best in the, in the game, in the boxing game. Why put yourself in a vulnerable position by going to another sport that you don't have any experience in? I just really believe that I am, that I have the potential to be the goal in just combat sports, not just the goal of boxing, just the goal of MMA, uh, boxing. And I think just challenging myself to learn those different arts is like super important to me for some reason. Like at first it was like, oh, I just want to learn, learn what I can and, you know, potentially have a few fights and maybe do a crossover fight. But then I was just seeing like the potential of my of myself and, you know, hearing the coaches speak of my potential and being in a gym with such great legends like Holly Holm and Johnny Bones and Arlene, you know, Belenko and everybody just was like, you got a really bright future, you know. So the three year contract with the PFL is great, but it's like I just want to get really, really great at everything. And I want to be PFL champion and boxing champion at the same time. I think that that will solidify my quoteness in both sports. Like it cannot be questioned. 
if I'm still a boxing champ with all my belts, and then I become an MMA world champ, and I hold both of those simultaneously, oh, man, anybody ever don't want to respect me as the quote, they just a hater. Okay, and so I believe you when you say that, and I think it's a tremendous answer, and it's mm -hmm. a tremendous goal to strive for. What I said when you came over was, this is an indictment on women's boxing. The fact that you have to do this, I know you're doing it to challenge yourself, to cement your legacy, mm -hmm. but can I ask this? If women's boxers, and you in particular, you don't have to talk about anyone else, was getting paid what they were deserving of, getting the shine that they were deserving of, put on the cards that they were, you wouldn't have to do this. You wouldn't even think of doing this because we know that the males get paid a hell of a lot more than you guys. And that's why they never consider coming over here. Am I wrong in saying that? If you were getting paid like what the males were getting paid, you wouldn't consider doing this. You're probably right. You're probably right about that. But I know also too, I didn't think about doing MMA till I heard Amanda Nunes said she had choked the shit out of me. Once she said that, that it, it, it lit a different fire in me. Like I've, I've had girls say stuff about me in boxing, but it was like when Amanda Nunes said it, it was like, not only did she say it, but she could actually do it. And I just was like, she said she had choked the shit out of me. Like she said she had never get a boxing ring, but she had choked it. She had choked me. And I just was like, at the point where I am and stuff that I know, and as tough as I am, I could still get in there with her and she would still be able to choke me. And that didn't make me feel good. So that's why I'm like, you know what? Um, she's a big part of my motivation in becoming a full mixed martial artist, like learning everything, being a complete um, MMA fighter, not just relying on just boxing, but learning everything. She's a huge part of that because I just, I actually like the way that she fight and I wanted to fight against her in boxing, but it's like now I would like to get good enough to where I could, you know, grace the cage with her and me and her can fight and I can see if she going to choke me. <laughs> so, so in your mind, is she the final boss? Like is everything that you're doing in, in sort of like in, in, in your mind, is this like all leading up to an Amanda Nunes fight in your mind? Is she the one like, do you even have a picture of her at the gym or something? Like, is that the way you view this person? She got under your skin. She said she's going to choke you out, but she won't fight you in a boxing ring. Is all of this in an effort to get that Amanda Nunes fight one day? All of this is to become PFL champion. Let's just keep that first. And then on the way of become PFL champion, being good enough to when people say Clarissa Shields versus Amanda Nunes, people don't just say, oh, all Amanda have to do is go in there and get on the ground and choke her out. It's over. They'll be like, oh, the goal is to be able to say, this is going to be a very, very great fight between the both of these two. And Clarissa Shields learned a lot of MMA and became a great mixed martial artist in four, three years, you know, three to four years. And she's taking a huge jump and fighting Amanda, but the fight is going to be huge. That's what I want. That's the overall thing. But the first thing first, getting good enough to become PFL champion. Let's not skip that part. I don't want to compare myself to you. I would never dare do that, but I, I want to throw this analogy out to you if I could, and maybe you'll understand where I'm coming from. Okay. So I cover MMA for a living uh, combat as well. I pop up here and there, boxing, this and that, but you know, the bread and butter is MMA. When I was working at ESPN, I got to do some NBA games and I noticed I got to do like 10 or 12 sideline games. I, I noticed my level of confidence when I was in the NBA arena was much lower than when I'm in an MMA arena because the vernacular, the people, I don't know everyone, this and that, you know, you're talking about 10 years versus 10 minutes. And so I'm wondering if you feel the same when you're at a boxing event and you're about to headline a show in a boxing match, you feel like, you know, you're the queen, right? You could walk around, you're the shit. When you come to the PFL fight week, I know it's just the second one. Is the confidence a little different? You don't know everyone. It's not your sport. You know, no. What? Okay, so we're we're not on the same level. <laughs> no, you're the shit. Any, any room, any room I step into, any field I step into, it don't matter. I'm always carrying my confidence. There's enough people out there doubting me already. I'd be stupid to doubt myself. Okay. Like I have full confidence that I put in the training, the hard work that I've learned, that I have stuff stored in here that I'm knowledgeable of doing what I have to do. So if, and, and, and if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here because nobody can force me to do MMA. Nobody can force me win a fight, no matter what they say, oh, this or that. Like if, if I feel like I don't have enough time to get ready or that I don't have the confidence to win, I'm not showing up. 
that's just me. I feel like hard work makes me confident. Not just me just being confident, but I put in so much hard work and I train four or five times a day. It's like, you think I'm putting in all that work to, to then get inside the cage or the ring to doubt myself? Hell no. I train too hard to ever doubt myself. Is there anything the PFL... Same confidence. Can, okay. Respect. Respect. Is there anything the, yeah. the PFL can do to make you do MMA full time? <laughs> uh... Mm. sure sure I mean more money is always good I mean I do boxing I have a financial goal for myself and I'm already a millionaire but I'm trying to become like multi-millionaire and you know taking a time away from boxing will take away hundreds of thousands of dollars you know I'm not getting paid that kind of money yet in the PFL like I'm getting paid a nice check and I'm happy for what I'm getting you know, for the experience that I have, but still, I I own a house. I'm in the real estate. I got a lot of stuff going on to where it requires like money sure. to keep things afloat. Sure. So I can't just give up 350k to kind of for for less. It's like if they want me to do it full time, I would do MMA full time if I was getting ready for the PFL t- uh you know season to make a million dollars which would be probably in 2023. Oh, I was just going to ask. I'll put boxing in then. What, why 23 and not 22? You don't ask questions you don't answer to, Ariel. What? I don't know. Why Why not 22? Because I've only been doing MMA for six, for nine months. You're telling me Next year, they do a 55 tournament? You'll smoke all those girls. Come on, you're Clarissa Shields. Yeah, but I want to make sure I can, no, like literally smoke all of them. Like I got to get, it's some tough girls in the PFL. And let's not forget your homegirl, Kayla. Well. You think I'm going to go in there off of just not being fully prepared? Okay, well, here's like, the thing. Yes, I'm an athlete. Yes, I'm close to shields. Yes, I box better. But she didn't have her first MMA fight till she trained for three years. That's- I did it in six months without having a ground game. Plan. So it's like I have to get that experience up. And now also has she had three years, but she's also now fighting for her second PFL championship. Like she got a lot of experience. So uh, yeah, I I can probably beat a lot of the girls at 155. But to get the million dollars, you gotta beat head honcho. And head honcho is Kayla. So yeah, 2022 is not it. But 2023, I feel is the golden year to where it'll be a very, very competitive fight. But I'm not going to go in there and put myself at a disadvantage just because I'm the GOAT. Come on now. You know I was smarter than that. Okay, well, she has one fight left. What if she leaves? That's on her. But I'm saying, then the door is open, right? Yeah. No, because they got other girls in the PFL, too. It's like, I want to make sure that I'm fully ready. I just don't want to underprepare or take any of them lightly. Okay. You know, because girls got more ground game than me. I have more boxing than them, but it's more ground game, mixed martial arts than there is. Standing up, you got boxing and kickboxing, then everything else is on the ground. Judo, jujitsu, wrestling, all that stuff is on the ground. Forget about all the guys that they have uh, under contract. The biggest fight that PFL could put on is you versus Kayla Harrison. And I said, by the way, I remember when you went to a UFC event 2018, December 2018, I think it was, you were backstage. And I said, PFL needs to sign Clarissa Shields and try to build towards a Clarissa Shields versus Kayla Harrison fight. It's the biggest fight that they could put on. I know you said Amanda Nunes said this and that down the road, maybe you'll meet her, but is there a part of you that doesn't want her to leave so that you can fight Kayla Harrison in 2023? It's, it's weird when you ask me that because me and Kayla are friends, you know, and it's like when you look at the, how big it could be, you're like, oh yeah, put the fight on and I hope one day we can fight. It's, Two-time Olympic gold medals in judo, two-time Olympic gold medals in boxing. That's four Olympic gold medals all together. And, and then you have that striker versus, you know, ground person, you know, lineup. And that always makes a great MMA fight. But then there's a part, too, where it's like I cheer for Kayla to win against her opponents. You know what I'm saying? So I, I try. It's like, yeah, one day I feel like we'll like, like, you know, that we'll fight. But then again, it's just like. I'm just wishing her the best in everything that she's doing. So it's it's weird. It's like I don't I don't have any ill will toward her. Like I actually love Kayla and, and wish her the best, but I don't know. I have, 
cheer for me in that fight, of course, but it's still, it's weird. Like, I don't like, I don't like fighting my friends. That's it. I had to do it a lot in the amateurs. I smoked a lot of girls who was my friends in the amateurs and they don't want to be friends after. So. Oh, no professional like, rivalry. Anything no, you could do. It, I have. I can do better. I have a. I have a healthy chip for that fight. You know, like if it was to happen, I would go in there, I'll prepare, I would get ready. But, and and I even trash talk her, of course, because it's for the fight, but it's, it's, it's different. It's different. Well, I remember when uh, they were promoting your fight, your debut, and then she came on after her fight and she's like, I'm the best here, I'm the best in the back. She cut a mean promo and it felt to me like she was talking about you. Well, we I asked her about that. Oh, you did? I asked her about that. Really? Yeah. On the side. Me and me and Kayla have each other numbers. So we text. Okay. We talk. Okay. What happened? What happened? And uh I asked her, I'm like, yo, was that and me? Like, what's up? Cause I ain't trying to have no problem with you right now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I think that she said um she was hyped up for the fight and she said she just wanted to stake her claim. You know, rightfully so. So she was like, that wasn't the direct shot at you. She said she just felt like she's being disrespected um, by certain people. And she wanted to let it be known that this is how she feel about herself. That's fair. And who am I to judge that? Because when you feel like you're great, like myself, you don't hold that in. You let it out. And the more you try to hold it in, like it'll anger you. It'll frustrate you. But when you finally just say like, listen, I'm the greatest. Like you, you or you can't do nothing with me. It, it, it makes you feel good and actually gives you more power. So I, Kayla, for actually, you know, she realized that about herself. She's claiming it, and uh, she's in the PFL championship. Uh, you train out of Jackson Wink in Albuquerque, one of the best gyms in MMA history. A couple of weeks ago, head coach Mike Winklejohn came on the show and uh, broke some massive news that he was not allowing John Jones to come to the gym anymore. How do you feel about that decision? Is that what he said? He did say that, yes. He he wasn't allowing him to come back till he got his stuff together. Well, until further notice, yes. Um, I applaud him on taking that stance. Uh, Hopefully Johnny Bones get his stuff together and get everything back straight. And uh, that's all I have to say about that, really, because I don't know really what much is going on. I didn't even know that. I know there was something going around, but I didn't really, I didn't really hear that. Okay, that is fair. Uh, you know, one thing that I've uh, heard from a lot of people when I said that you were going to be on the show was, ask her about MMA fans. Ask her about MMA fans. What's your beef with MMA fans? I didn't know about this. Why does it, Why is everyone asking me to ask you about MMA fans? Beef. Yeah. I don't have no beef with them. I actually I like the MMA fans. <laughs> okay. What's the difference between boxing fans and MMA fans in your opinion? Mm. Or maybe nothing. I can say that MMA fans troll more. Really? Than boxing fans. Yeah. Less respectful. Like before I made the transition over, they were trolling me a lot. And it was like Amanda Nunes said she was going to choke me. I didn't say I was going to choke her. She said she's going to choke me. But they were all kind of like just coming at me like, oh, all the girls in MMA would kill you. They they would smoke you. And it was like a thing of every day. But what I will say is that they took the time to actually Google me and look me up. And then they actually was like, whoa, the disrespect that they were seeing, I mean, that they were given, that they understand why you were just like, I wasn't having it, and they started to respect who I am in boxing. That's what I will say. But now, since I made the transition, MMA fans have been great to me. Good. They've been applauding me. People inbox me and send me tips that I actually watch. A guy said, hey, you know, to throw kicks, you're going to have to do a lot of yoga and stretching. So what I do, I do yoga and stretching just because he made that comment. Wow. Um, I mean, it was one guy who said, oh, she's not ever going to be able to throw a kick right. She doesn't do yoga and Whatever. So I looked at that comment and said, oh, I bet you I do do some yoga. So I do yoga and I stretch more and I'm getting really good at my kicks. And I mean, they're all they've all been very, very positive, especially after my last fight, like being taken down, being on the ground, overcoming adversity and winning. 
I don't have no beef with MMA fans. I just don't like Twitter, period. Like, Twitter is not the platform for me. I'm actually waiting to get one million followers on Instagram. I'm ha- almost halfway there, and I'm deleting my whole my whole Twitter. I probably just sell it to somebody else and let them have it. But um, I got, like, 80,000 followers on Twitter, and they and majority of them don't like me, so I don't know why they follow me. No, they just they're just trolling me all day. They're just trolling, and it, they it's see it's a, a reaction, and and uh, and that's that. Yeah, that's right. And can I ask you um, just a, two more things before I let you go? Why did you get so fired up when someone asked you about fighting on a Jake Paul fight card a couple weeks ago at the press conference? Why did that bother you so much? Do you want to hear my response again? Well, I know. I want to know why it bothered you. I heard your response, but why did it bother you? No, so it's, the, it, it's, it's the why and because what have Jake Paul done that's so great to where he gets to be main event pay-per-view on Showtime, but I don't. I, feel that I got to fight under him. That's the thing. It's like, I actually earned my opportunity. They're just giving it to him. They're like, hey, you're Jake Paul. You got a million subscribers on YouTube. Your brother get to fight main event on Showtime. That's trash. I, I I literally earned my spot and never was given an opportunity. That's what pisses me off. It's not really Jake Paul. It's more of like, how dare they give him that opportunity that I earned. I fought main event on Showtime six times. Sold out arenas for a Showtime. And still would get the, oh, you're, um oh, you know, we don't think you're big enough to fight on pay-per-view. Get out of here. It's crap. That's why I will never fight the undercard of him or 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 nobody else who haven't earned it. If they're not a world champion, Earl Spence, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, Terrence Crawford, even Shakur Stevenson, if they not none of them, I'm not fighting on the undercard or no other I man. Love, I love it. Why are you number one and not Katie Taylor? Seems to go back and forth every time each one of you fight. Why are you number one and not her? It's just no female fighter that give me problems. Like when we do a pound for pound list, we look at skills, power, precision, accomplishments, right? So, it, so if we're looking at that correctly, and it's versus me and Katie Taylor, I'm a three-time division world champ. Katie's a two-time division world champ. I have her beat there. Katie won one Olympic gold medal. I won two Olympic gold medals. I have her beat there. Then we turn pro. I'm 11 and 0, two knockouts. I think she she fight way more than me. She fights a lot to be a female boxer, but she's at a smaller weight class too. I think she like maybe 16 and 0, eight knockouts, something like that. But she has had a lot of tough fights where girls with the same similar style give her problems. Girls who come forward unorthodox, throwing just crazy punches. They give her problems. Me, a girl come doing that to me. She getting stopped. I outbox, get unanimous decisions over everybody I box against in boxing. Everybody. Nobody has given me a problem. I go on there and I smoke these girls with the jab, combinations, head movement. One thing I'll say that Katie, like that, like that I have that Katie does not have is the head movement. She have great footwork back and forth, but she get hits a lot. I also have better defense. It's nothing against her. It's just I'm a very, very dominant fighter, and she's not. So when they look at – when they say pound for pound, I think it's just people looking at, oh, she's Katie Taylor. She got her whole country of Ireland behind her. And they don't really want to give me props for my skills. But it's like I can box. I can bang. I can even move like Katie Taylor. If I was at 130, 135, and I was to fight her, I would win. Clarissa, you are incredible. I feel like I could run through a wall right now just talking to you. I'm not sure if you hate me and want to punch me. You know me. who makes me feel like that? Yeah, who? Bernard Hopkins makes me feel like I can run through a wall when I see him. Like when he talks, I just want to start doing push ups. Yes, he is the man. <laughs> uh, I am so looking forward to your return on Wednesday. I have so much respect for what you've done in the world of boxing, but the fact that you are doing this in the world of MMA. Uh, you have guts that a lot of other people don't have and you're putting yourself in a vulnerable situation and you're thriving and it's must-see TV when you compete in boxing but also now in MMA. So much respect. 
I hope you uh, you get all that money. That's right. The rings right there. Two time Olympic gold. Medal. I hope you get all that the money. Rings in the right hand. Let's go. Look for the right hand on Wednesday. It's coming. I heard you're going to break her jaw. I can't wait. Uh, Abigail Montez, Clarissa Shields, this Wednesday on ESPN2, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. So great to talk to you for the first time. I look forward to doing it again very mm-hmm. soon. Gotcha. All right. Appreciate that. There she is. The quote, Clarissa Shields. Holy smokes. She's incredible. What have I been waiting for? That was amazing stuff. Wow. That was fantastic. She is must-see TV. In a, in a day and age when a, 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 the majority of the fighters, the majority, I'm not saying all of them, but that's why the Fyodor fight got so much attention. It's very hard to be must-see TV outside of the UFC right now just because they have so many fighters on their roster. And so you got to break through. Back in the day, Coker did a great job of breaking through with strike force because he had women's MMA. I mean, he had the most high-profile female fighters, Gina Carano, uh, Chris Cyborg, Shayna Baszler, etc. PFL doing a great job. And also little things like the production. Look at this. Look what they provided. This is a this is a PFL. This is why if you're an MMA promotion out there and you're not doing business with the number one MMA show on the planet, the show of record, the show of shows, the king of kings, I mean, it's just bad business. Dare I say, dare I say, to steal a phrase from another media member, is promotional malpac- malpractice. See, steal a phrase and you mess it up. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to all of you. Steal someone's work, you'll mess it up. Um, so that's very exciting. In a matter of seconds, we'll go from one female fighter who will make you run through a wall to another, Kayla Harrison, one of my favorites in the game. I don't know if she's going to have the same uh, setup as uh, as Clarissa. But I look forward to talking to her. Uh, Clarissa Shields is fighting on the same card. You've got uh, Kayla Harrison versus Taylor Guardado in the main event women's lightweight final. 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. Ray Cooper against Magomed, Magomed Karimov. Mago Millions, as they love to call him. Uh, that's the welterweight final. Abigail Montez against Clarissa Shields. Bruno Capeloza against Ante De Gila. That's the uh, heavyweight final. Very good chance I screwed that up. Movlid Haibulev against Chris Wade in the featherweight final. Antonio Carlos Jr. against Martin Hamlet in the light heavyweight final. Omari Ahmedov against Jordan Young. Can I just make a, uh, make a revelation right here now? I didn't know Omari Ahmedov was in the PFL. When did that happen? Uh, Don Madge, I see listed in some places, but I don't think he's fighting on the card anymore. Uh, Julia Budd against Caitlin Young. Julia Budd, the former Bellator women's featherweight champion, also on the card. So a little something for everyone. Prelims start at 4.30 Eastern. I mean, this show is literally going to end and you can start watching the prelims. I mean, what a day that's going to be this coming Wednesday. And the word is, the word is, because it's on a Wednesday, pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if we've ever done a show, an MMA hour on the same day as a major card, obviously because most UFCs are going on uh, Saturdays or in the past it was Friday. I mean, it's very rare that any kind of show is going on on a Monday. The word is we're gonna have Ray Cooper on the show on Wednesday, literally hours, minutes, more like hours before his fight, his welterweight finale against Magomed, Magomed Karimov. How cool is that? Fight day. I mean, if he's fighting in the co-main, 8 o'clock, we're talking 6.30 or so. He comes on the show at 1. That's like five hours before his fight. How crazy is that? I'm looking forward to that. It's a different kind of buzz. And I got to give him a lot of credit for coming on fight day. A lot of people don't want to do media. They want to be left alone. That's pretty damn cool. So that's on Wednesday. Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in uh, Hollywood, Florida. And the main event is Kayla Harrison, 11-0 against Taylor Guardado. It's the women's lightweight final. And it's always great to talk to Kayla Harrison, who uh, has been talked about on this show. 
the last few episodes, and of course we've been talking about her contract status for the past year or so. This is her last PFL fight, at least for now. I felt like there was a time, maybe five years ago, where MMA free agency was a big thing. And then it kind of cooled off for whatever reason, but I feel like it's kicking back into high gear. Kayla Harrison, Nathan Diaz, one fight left for the pride of Stockton. Things are about to get interesting in the business of MMA. And I don't think that's a knock against anyone. I don't think that's a knock against a promotion. I don't think that's a knock against any you know, particular group, whatever. Every fighter should test the uh, free agency market. I'm getting something here from uh, Casey. Oh, what is this? Okay. Something about contender series. All right. I need to watch this before I actually weigh in on this. Something about someone missing weight and all this stuff. Uh, I will, uh, I will watch this. I, I can't, I can't watch the clip at this moment. Um, all right. So in a couple of uh, seconds here, hopefully, uh, any, okay. Yes. All right. We are ready. All right. Without further ado, so we go from Clarissa Shields now to one of the very best fighters on the planet. One of my favorite people in combat sports, the baddest woman on the planet, the one and only Kayla Harrison. There she is. Same setup. I heard Kayla that you called the PFL people and said, Clarissa's coming from this professional setup. I need to be from the anything she can do, I can do better because this is one of the all-time great setups that we've ever had in the history of the program. Is that true? Oh my God, you're just a you're just such a troll sometimes. This is really. not me trolling, Kayla. No, it's you have no bigger no, fan. No, I this woke sport up this me. morning and I I got your Zoom link and I said I don't want to use this Zoom link. Get me a new one. So oh. PFL said I didn't want to use yours. Yeah, no respect, respect. This is great. <laughs> this is great. I love this. I mean, this is, you're, you're talking into like a professional camera right now. This is not like a computer. Setup. I know it's pretty intense, right? I actually feel pretty good about how I feel good about this, how this interview is going to go just based off of. This is great. This feels big. The wow factor. Yeah. I feel more professional. Usually, you know, like I'm not wearing <laughs> shoes right now. I mean, this is as unprofessional as it gets over here. Oh, I'm yeah. wearing new shoes. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Converse. I can't quite see. What are those? Yeah, these are, these are Dior. Okay. Oh, I Christian can't. Dior. Excuse are, me. Yeah, your favorite person got them for me, actually, as a gift. I don't know who you're talking about. Dan Lambert? <laughs> yeah, no, not Dan Lambert. Kayla, <laughs> let's break the fourth wall. Before this interview, I was told, don't bring up any drama. Don't br And you bring up Ali. Why? I'm trying to take the high road here and make <laughs> friends, and you're bringing him up? Why? I, no, I just meant, I wanted to show off my new shoes. Yeah, you said nice. you were wearing it's shoes. I'm nice. showing off my new shoes. Yeah. Is this your way of implying? Do you have any questions for me? Are you going to broker peace? Are you going to do this once and for all or no? I am. Okay. Listen, I am like, I'm the queen of love. Okay. So I, I, I can make like, it happen. By the way, when you consider your next options after this fight, your contract is done. We've been talking about this all year. Will you consider setups like this? I mean, you're not going to get setups <laughs> like this in other organizations. I just want to let you know. Like you're not going to get professional. You don't interviews. think so? I don't think so. No. No one does it like PFL. That's something to take into consideration. This crew right here, I will tell you, they are the best of the best, though. PFL crew, all of them, social media, film, everything, photography. It's a good group. I've I've grown up, I feel like, around yes. them. So I'm familiar. Um, we just had Clarissa Shields on moments ago. Mm -hmm. uh, first time talking to her. I'm a fan. She's a great interview. She, I mean, yeah. I, I'm just wondering, was this like... She two, is quite spirited, isn't she? She has such character. Two ships uh, sailing in the night. Like, did you guys pass each other? Did, were any words exchanged? Because I'm, I'm assuming... Same we setup. know each other, Ariel. Like, we've known each other since the London Olympics. We're not like... I don't know if... I don't know if there's like this misconception that we're enemies or whatever, but I, I have nothing but good things to say about Clarissa. She's cool. We're cool. She's you know, young up and coming fighter. And my job is to help make the journey for women like her easier and better and bring that ceiling higher so she can make more money and it'll be good. Everyone By the way, I wasn't implying. I don't know what you're talking. I wasn't implying there was any beef. I just wondered. Did you, you pass got, each other? Yeah, I don't know. Call? Did you say anything? <laughs> like, did you say good luck? You know, I'll be watching. I don't know. Just any words? Of course, of course. I mean, I saw her yesterday. So we've already said all that. 
I'm sure your ears were, uh, were burning last week because a lot of people on this program were talking about you. So I want to play you a couple clips and get your response to these clips, okay? Can we do that? First up, uh, here's your supposed, <laughs> your supposed friend, Dan <laughs> Lambert. Don't get me jacked up right now. I'm going to start sweating. Here's Dan Lambert talking about Kayla Harrison last week on the program. I remember after the 2016 Olympic Games, there was a, a young woman named Kayla Harrison, who stood at the uh, podium and crapped all over MMA. Now she's become one of the best fighters in MMA. And not that long ago, she's crapping all over pro wrestling and she's out there looking like a natural. I feel like she can take the pro wrestling world by storm and become an absolute star over there. Are there any talks of her coming over? I know she did a little appearance here and there, but actually competing as well. Well, there's a lot of talk from Kayla because it comes out of both sides of her mouth, unfortunately. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. <laughs> talk like pro wrestlers now she lives for mma then i'll never get into pro wrestling and a few months later she's sitting in the middle of the ring with twenty thousand people there kissing her (laughs) muscles and telling people to go piss off um i think she's a natural for it as well she's she's got a lot of charisma she's kind of mean um she's good at the shit talk she never shuts the hell up i think uh she could draw a lot of money just from people to want to see her get shut up i'd pay a lot of money myself (laughs) if she couldn't talk in the gym what about that I mean, by the way, I have to say, he's right about everything he said. You say you hate pro wrestling, you make fun of pro wrestling, and then there you are like a natural, kissing the biceps, talking smack, all this stuff. You love it, right? He made me sweat. That's how much <laughs> he just made me. Um, it's actually really hot in here, by the way. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Like Listen, it's hot under hot the lights. Um, no, he is just like, listen, first of all, Dan is upset because he knows without a doubt in his mind that if I were to cross over into his little fantasy world, I would take it by storm. And he can't stand that because he's trying so hard to be successful and I'm helping him as much as I can. Like I'm listen, Dan, maybe do this, maybe do that. Maybe lose a little weight, maybe say this more, maybe say this less. I'm helping him as much as I can, but there's only so much you can do with, you know, what God gave you. And Dan just doesn't have it. Do you love it? Do you love it now? Did you catch the bug? Come on, be honest. <laughs> you do love it. You said the same thing about MMA. You would kill them in pro wrestling. I want to be your man. I want to be yeah. your pro wrestling manager. I don't want to take Ali's job as your <laughs> MMA manager. I just want to be your mouthpiece. Like I want to come out with the megaphone and I will talk the talk for it, even though you yeah. don't really need my help. But you have it. I think in we pro would wrestling. be a pretty good duo. I do we think would, so we too. We would crush. Have they talked to it you? It wouldn't be fair though. Like it would just be too easy, don't you think? I, I think we like, would we would, the, we're just like, there's levels, there's levels and we would just be on a different level. Have they asked like, you? That's why, that's why I'm not interested because it would like, what's fun in that? Like what's fun. in I want an ch- actual challenge, you know, going and beating up, you know, people who hang out in their mom's basement is like, cool. Yeah. I mean, you're t- I would beat up all the guys on the, those rosters, like a hundred percent. I know everyone's like, Oh, girls can't beat up guys. Blah, blah. Like Chris Jericho. I would like, I would eat him for breakfast. Are you kidding me? That old washed up has been like, (laughs) are you kidding me? (laughs) Grab him by his hair and throw him around. We'll do the reverse of what Andy Kaufman did back in the day. Andy Kaufman was a comedian who went into wrestling. No idea who that is. Oh my God, really? How old are you, Kayla? 31. 31? You don't know who Andy Kaufman is? He was a- Who is it? You got to watch the movie Man on the Moon starring Jim Carrey if you want a bit of a taste. But Andy Kaufman was a very, very famous comedian on the show Taxi, also another show called Saturday Night Live. Um, and he went into pro wrestling and went after okay. women. Uh, obviously, it was oh. a work, oh. but it was a really oh. big thing. You're going to go after the men in pro wrestling. It'll be yeah. the reverse. Yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, I could do that, no problem. It wouldn't even be a work. It would be real, is what I'm saying. The first match that I would book is you versus Mark Ramundi. First, you take out all the loser journalists. And oh, then you God. Can- <laughs> Here we go. Mark. You know, man. I like the feud. He interviewed me. He interviewed me a couple of weeks ago. I swear to God, this is a true story. He had on some obscure wrestling T-shirt, like some guy from, I don't know, indie wrestling or something he was trying. And then a blazer over it. Like, that's the level of nerd we're at. He put a blazer over that. Can you imagine? <laughs> Oh, has Tony Khan made an offer? Um, I do not. 
Who's Tony Khan? Oh, stop it. I don't believe you. Um, all right. Well, okay. So then you have uh, that situation. And then literally 30 minutes later, now I know Dan and you are buds, but this one, in my opinion, was a shoot. Now I know you know what shoot means. Work in the wrestling world is like when it's scripted. A shoot is when it's real. Like what we do on this show is a shoot. We shoot on people, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Stop teaching me the lingo. I don't right. want to know. Okay. Stop. We'll break kayfabe here and show you this clip of Jorge Masvidal talking about you. Take a look at this. I, I want to be Kayla's manager. I want to be her mouthpiece and talk about her being the greatest athlete in the world. Kayla Harrison. What is it? Uh, <laughs> Kayla Harrison. Are you beefing with Kayla? You're not beefing with Kayla. Oh, you're talking about the judo girl. Yeah, yeah, I know her. What? You guys beefing? You and Kayla beefing? <laughs> no, man, I love that girl. You crazy? <laughs> I just got to troll her, man. Oh, my she God. She thinks she's a team captain. Obviously, she's not. Oh, my Damn. gosh. There's so, Oh, there's some dissension? Uh, you're, you're more Team Nunez, right? We're going to start. Jorge Masvidal, we'll Team Nunez, hates Kayla Harrison. Tweet it now, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I love them both. Um, I've known Amanda, obviously, longer, and... They're, they're both freaking amazing. But just the thing is, though, Kayla thinks she's the team captain. Oh, yeah, so that yeah. doesn't sit well with me. Why? Oh. Who is the team captain right now? <laughs> I'm <laughs> not the official team captain, but you know, there, there, there's there's like many factors. I just tell you this much. Tell me. She's oh. not. The, let me clarify this here in, in the Ultimate MMA show. She's not the team captain. Oh, she's trying to, and you're basically saying, I've been here for a decade, know your role, take uh. a number. We'll revisit this in a decade, is what you're saying, isn't I'm like the person that could assign the team captain. I have that type of power to American Top Team. And once again, I will repeat, she is not the team captain. Wow. Okay? Fair enough. Wow. Uh, any final... But she's a freaking amazing and fighting. And for the most part, I'm scared of her. You know, that's why I could act wild now over the phone. <laughs> what do you think of that? So is there actual professional beef between you guys? I mean, this is just another instance of like... Everybody wants what they can't have, you know, like he's been around a long time for sure. He's a veteran of the sport. He is, um, you know, ATT through and through. We love him. He's our, he's like our mascot, you know, but to be a team captain is a little different. You're not a mascot. You're a leader. Wow. Mascot. Leaders are, are uh, leaders are made. They're not born. And I'm a made and born leader. So who is the actual team captain? Like, is this something voted <laughs> upon? Is is there no, like, there's it's no vote? Me. It it's is you. Me. Oh my God. It is me. They voted for it's you. In my bio on Instagram, it's official. Okay, I guess that is, <laughs> makes it official. When Listen, I if I walk, when you, when I walk into the gym, you have fighters say, hey, Cap. Really? They don't say that to anybody else. Wow. That's how you know. Do you think it's because of Amanda Nunes? He's siding with her. He can't publicly side <laughs> with you. <laughs> no, I think it's because I'm annoying, like Dan and. Masvidal saying I never shut up. So okay. Just, they got to keep a good girl down. That's all. So what's up with you and Amanda? You guys are training now together. Why? Mm-hmm. Um, because she's training with Mike and working on her wrestling and asked me and I said, absolutely. But recently you told me like not that long ago, you guys don't really train together. Well, we hadn't. I mean, we hadn't. She had been, I don't know, preparing for a striker or something. Who was her last fight? Uh, her last fight. Uh, well, she was preparing for a Juliana Pena, maybe? Or you no, mean prior to that? that? Gosh. Prior to that, she was preparing for somebody else. Was it Felicia? I can't Spencer? remember who it was. Felicia Spencer. Why am I blanking on mm -hmm. this right now? No, I worked with her for the Felicia fight, but I didn't work with her for the last fight because it was a striker. I think it was a tall striker. Yeah, but I'm getting old. And I was Taylor. not, I don't fit that bill. Okay, so now you're helping her prepare for uh, Juliana Pena. Or yeah. is she helping you prepare for this fight on Wednesday? I feel like both. I feel like we've been getting good good work in. We we drill twice a week. We go with Mike Brown. We work on our wrestling, our defensive wrestling, offensive wrestling, our grappling. We go. We do a little bit of everything. And I mean, it's just you can't get work like that anywhere else. She's the best in the world. And when you have two of the best in the world working together, we're just pulling away from the pack that way. You know, we're just getting better and better. Megan Anderson. I don't know how I forgot about that. Is that who it was? That's who it was. Yeah. Who's a free agent, by Obviously, the way? Obviously, I am not a uh, good fit in for Megan Anderson. <laughs> right. No, not at all. A um, although maybe a future opponent of yours. Possible. Where, where do we stand with that? I'll fight anybody. Is this going to be your last PFL fight? 
hard hitting questions. Um, right now, the only thing on my mind is this next fight, which is October 27th on ESPN two versus Taylor Guardado. And whatever happens after that is going to happen. And I'll meet it when it does. That was you like, that was from? like an Olympic podium answer right there. That wasn't a real, you know what that's from though. My real, the real ones will know uh, what's going to happen. will happen. And we'll meet it when it does. That's a, that's a book line, a line from a very famous book. I don't read books. I don't have time for that. Um, Harry Potter, but uh, okay, Harry Potter. Really? You're a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> Huge. Wait, my dog's call- name is Dobby. You call wrestling fans nerds, but you're a Harry Potter fan. Wow. Because I- <laughs> that is rich. That is rich. That was not good. That was not good. Okay. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. Um, have they tried to talk? Well, I don't walk around carrying a wand and like <laughs> well, who saying knows? that I want to be a say, saying I want to be a wizard. Unlike you, who's like I want to be your manager. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you ever worn a Harry Potter T-shirt? Um. That's seems- probably. Oh, and and you're gonna make fun of poor Mark Ramundi for wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I am. Yeah, he put a blazer over it. Okay, I've never done that. That's for sure. <laughs> the blazer is a classic Mark move. Um, have they tried to talk <laughs> to you about the contract situation before this last fight? Usually, promotions don't want to let their star <laughs> go into their last fight without a new deal. Yeah, I know that they're talking to to my manager. And I'm sure that things are being done behind the scenes that I'm not, I'm just not focused on that. You know, anytime I've been stressed or worried about something like that, it's only affected me negatively. My coach, big Jim said something to me when I was young and I was broke and I had $5 in my bank account. And I was like, big Jim, I have no money, blah, blah, blah. I'm crying. I'm desperate. He said, if you want money, win and the money will come. Hmm. And he's right. All I have to do is win and the rest will take care of itself. Has it been hard to focus on the fight when, you know, people like me and everyone talking about the contract? No, because it's for me, this is, I mean, I've been training my whole life for these moments. I've been training my whole life for one day over and over and over again. And um, the job's not done yet. You know, Taylor is standing across the cage from me in, in a couple of days time. And she's going to come in there and bring, bring it, bring it all. She's going to leave her, her heart inside that cage. She's got nothing to lose. So my mind has been focused. I, I've been training hard. I, I feel good. I feel ready. You see that? Nice. I'm already on weight. I'm looking, I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. Speaking of the weight, what are the chances this is your last fight at 55? Oh my God. I don't know. What I are the chances? I mean, is there a chance that you'll move to 45 after this? Because I have to be honest. Let me let me shoot straight. It's it's shoot straight. It's very it's very boxing at this point. I don't feel like your opponents are on your level. I think it's been great. Mm-hmm. I would have mm-hmm. I would have orchestrated it this way. Beat everyone. You're 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 crushing the competition. It's so one sided. But now we want to see something. We want to see something different. We don't want to see the same opponents come through, or maybe just you know. Yeah, I agree. One forty five. I mean, in the PF- in the PFL's defense, they have brought in new people every year. They've done sure. a pretty good job. Same level. Um, I know that they've I I know that they've signed Julia Budd. Um, I heard that Megan is a free agent. <laughs> I know that they're they signed Clarissa Shields. I know they're doing everything in their power to continue to build the division. Um, who, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know, I'm very comfortable to fight at 145. I'm comfortable to fight at 155. I'm going to go where my heart tells me to go and and do what I think is best for me and my beautiful family. You are the main event. I would strongly suggest you are the face of PFL. I would say that you have you helped. Better you better after okay. you have said that I'm not in the past. What, when did I say that you're not? Me? No. I'm like your biggest supporter. What are you talking about? When have I said? Mm-hmm. I said Anthony Pettis. Is it, was it the mm-hmm. Anthony Pettis? I don't even remember what I said mm-hmm. about that one. Did I say he was? <laughs> I said he was one of the... <laughs> Listen, uh, you are the face of the PFL. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> do you feel any sort of, honestly, like, do you feel a, a sort of sense of obligation? Like, hey, these guys gave me this spot. They gave me this opportunity. They, they, they've they paid me well, I, I presume. I need to be loyal to them. Do you think of that at all? Or is there no loyalty in this game? Um, <laughs> well, let me put it to you this way. I do believe in the PFL. I'm proud to be the face of the PFL. I believe in the format. I believe in what they're doing. They have taken good care of me. They have um, 
helped me create a career that I'm proud of and continue to be proud of. But there are no friends in business. The PFL is not my friend. And I don't mean that in a negative like way. I just mean that I've learned the hard way through life. There are no friends in business. So it's not personal. It's just business. Just like if I ever fight someone, you know, it's not personal. It's just business. The same thing goes with the PFL. I truly like the PFL. I like everyone who's sitting in this room with me. I like everyone I work with, but it's not personal. You were about to say Nunez and you stopped short. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were saying if I fight. Well, what if I was talking about Clarissa? Oh, okay. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was, that, that. <laughs> uh, are you going to walk out to No Friends in the Industry by uh, Drake? Because I feel like that's the perfect way. No, okay. I'm not. <laughs> well, why? Are you not a Drake fan? No, he's all right. But I just feel like that's what you were just saying. You have no friends. Like this is this is all business. It's all personal. None of us have any friends in this business, Ariel. Well, speak for yourself, None Kayla. A lot of people like me. All right, for God's sakes. They I'm like the... you, but they're not your friend. No, totally they're, they're different. Not. No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> they're not. In fact, I how should... many times you've been stabbed? How many times you've been stabbed in the back working in this industry? You have Probably opened more the... than you can count. Kayla, you have now opened the door to one of the all-time great zingers that I could reply with, but I'm not going to go there for the sake of our relationship. I'm listening. Well, I've been stabbed in the back by, his, I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I, mean, <No. laughs> I didn't bring it up. You did. I'm just saying there are no friends there. It's okay. Yeah. I get Drake. It. Drake gets it. That was you me. get it. We all get it. I'm just speaking the truth. I'll say it. I don't care. You mentioned your family moments ago. Uh, you recently became an official mom. You are the official Today. mother. Today, this morning, before you. Wow. So it was Actually. this morning. Because I thought you posted a couple of weeks ago that... Two different hearings. So um, Kyla's became official on October 4th. And then Emery's became official this morning. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That is amazing. Thank you. What does that feel like? That's... I mean, terrifying, but you know, the most joy I've ever felt. I don't know. You're a parent, so you get it. Like when you hold your baby for the first time, I'm sure the feelings of like fear and um, trepidation, but also just like excitement and joy and all of it rolled in. I mean, it's the greatest high I've ever experienced to know that um, No matter what, now it's my job to protect them, to take care of them, to love them unconditionally, to provide for them and to give them a secure, safe environment where they can not only, um, you know, survive, but blossom and thrive. What's so amazing about this is you are giving them all that, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, you're a single mother. And so- I am. And you're, you're doing something incredibly hard. You are training for- fights with a lot of pressure involved, a lot of money yeah. involved, a lot at stake. What is that? Like yeah. my wife was away this weekend and I was alone with my three kids and it was a weekend and that was hard. I like, and, and I didn't have to go train and I wasn't exhausted afterwards. And that was really hard and it doesn't happen often. I was thinking of you as I was preparing for the interview. I was like, man, I can't imagine you go to the gym. You must be exhausted. They're young. They're tough. Like, how do you do this? Um, well, first of all, <laughs> that is awesome. You give props to your wife. I, I hope you do. I hope you like Absolutely. I said, please don't ever leave weekend. again. <laughs> you know, it, it is, it is hard. I'm very lucky that I have a good support system around me. You know, my mom um, comes down for all my fights. So when I get closer to the fight, she comes down and helps out. The, my kids both go to um, the church that we go to now we have, they have a school. So my kids go to the school there. I have a big church family. I have my, my gym family. Um, so it's, you know, it is hard cause I'm mom and dad and I'm, um, sometimes I feel really alone in it and it's really, it is hard, but I have a good support system around me. Do they have any idea what you do? Like, do they know that you're a star on TV fighting people and all this stuff? Um, Kyla does. She's coming to the fight this, this Wednesday wow. uh, with my mom. So she's, she knows she's. She'll say silly stuff sometimes, like, Mom, put it on Instagram, make me famous, or like wow. something like that. But yeah, I mean, Emery, I think he just, you know, three year olds are in their own little. Right. They come to the gym with me all the time. So the only reason I'm asking this question is because uh, you shared it first. 
uh, I think he was not feeling well recently. And uh, your son. And there's nothing scarier yes. than that. There's nothing worse than that, right? Than seeing a little Ugh. kid in the hospital. I've been there as well. It's Ugh. just the worst. It's gut-wrenching. Uh, worse than gut-wrenching. What was that like and how is he doing now? <clears throat> yeah, it was terrifying. Um, I never felt so hopeless, like helpless, you know, in my life. He, we've all been sick, actually. I got sick. He got sick. But he spiked 105 fever and I couldn't get it to break. Um, you know, with, and I, I, I had never had kids with a fever that high before. So I called the pediatrician. They said, take him into the ER. Um, they were able to get it down. It was a sinus infection. Everything was okay. Then, you know, five days later, Kyla spiked 106 oh, no. fever. And I was like, oh my God. So, uh, it's terrifying. And, um, just makes me super thankful and grateful that, um, you know, I guess I, what I realized in those moments is as long as we have our health, our health, you know, we are doing all right. Okay. And is he okay now? And is she okay now? He's okay. Oh my, dude, he was like, literally, I knew something was wrong because it was five o'clock and he wanted to go to bed. Like, and he never, like this boy is so spirited. You can't keep him down. Like from sun up to sundown, he is go, go, go nonstop. And at five o'clock he was like, mommy, I want to lay in your bed. And I was like, what the, and I checked his temperature, but literally a day later, one day of antibiotics and he was back to the zoomies. Like he was totally fine. Meanwhile, I'm dying. You know, I'm training, I'm sick. He's sick. Then Kylie gets sick. And I'm like, please stop moving. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay now? Cause I couldn't help but Now that you say this, you have been coughing a lot. I'm fine. Uh, okay. I have just like, I had a little sinus infection, but you can't keep me down on my worst day. I'm still the best in the world. Ariel. Um, before I let you go, what's up with you and uh, professional troll Dylan Dennis? What's going on over there? <laughs> yeah, that's been getting some more play. Um, this happened years ago. I don't know. This happened years ago. Like he was after one of my fights. He was at a nightclub that we were at and I was with um, Ali, someone I was with at the time. I think Usman a bunch of people, but Ali and him were beefing. I don't know exactly what's happening. So they kind of started to get into it. And I got in the middle of it and kind of just like pulled his hoodie and basically told him to like go fly a kite. <laughs> and um, it worked, but that's like snowballed into this, like Kayla, Kayla Harrison punched Dylan Dennis in the face and like all of this craziness. And also Ali is really good at, um, taking a story and running with it and making it something. But just to clear the air for everyone, I did not assault Dylan Dennis. I like pulled his hoodie and told him to go sit down. And uh, cause the last thing I wanted was a fight to break out sure. on the night when I was supposed to be celebrating. So um, yeah. And I have, I don't, I don't, he's, I have nothing. I wish nothing but the best for him. I hope he gets his life together. I think that more people would like you if, in fact, the story was true that you insulted him. Yeah, but of course, I, if something had broke broken out, like I would have my guys back, like 100%. I would have been in the in the fire with them. But the number one job, as you know, as a parent or a mom, sure, is to diffuse. keep everybody safe. So diffuse the situation, which I feel like I did pretty well, and uh, sent him on his way. And we were good. It was a great night. I had but, a great time. But all that being said, you you would tap him if you guys like rolled or something, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just want to yes. make that clear. Um, all right. So you return on Wednesday. Finale, the second straight million dollar fight for you. Um, Taylor Guardado, three and one. You're 11 and 0. It's the main event of a very good card on Wednesday. So people are going to watch our show and then boom, prelims will start. It's yes, going to be a great absolutely. day of MMA. Um, on Wednesday. So I wish you the best, Kayla, in what could be, could. I'm not saying it, it will be. I'm not saying I want it to be, but it could be your final fight in the <laughs> PFL, which is always very interesting. It raises the stakes, and uh, it's always a great pleasure and honor to have you on the program. And I just want to let you know, with all these people talking smack, I'm out here, you know, taking bullets for you. I catching strays so much, Ariel. left and right on your behalf. So maybe just, after my fight, maybe after my fight, if we have some downtime, we can get together. We can go like, Bust through the AEW doors. Oh my god! Bang some heads. To, that would. Am I? Are you excited? I now? would. I would are love you? that. Listen, I would. <laughs> I would cut some promos on those jabrones all day. I mean, I. All right, would, well, let's let's make something happen. We'll go. 
honestly, it could be me and you versus like Dan and his. Oh, whatever. that's the thing. I think you need to break free from that group. They're holding you down. It's a bunch of old timers <laughs> yeah. over there. It's all these people who are trying to get some shine off the world. What if wrestling. we just busted through the doors and just blew that whole spot up? Oh, my that God. Would I would huh? cut promos on CM Punk, on Tony Khan. I would cut promos on all of them. And they well, wouldn't start writing down your promos right okay. now. OK, oh start God. writing them. Exciting. Maybe I'll give you an early uh, early. Christmas present. Are you wait? Your Hanukkah. Hanukkah present. Yeah, it's okay. Hanukkah. Apologies. Are you gonna walk out to Island Boy on Wednesday? That's what I heard. I don't know what any of that is. Island Boy. Island Boy. Yeah, I haven't. I don't. No. It's a Florida no. song. No. All right. Uh, I'll I'll text it to you. you is it that the guys with the tattoos? Yes. Yes. Are you gonna walk? I out? saw you like two. I. What is that? What is that? I stuff? mean, those guys. I, what is that? I don't know what species those guys are, but it's the hottest song, <laughs> and I have put out. I said to any fighter competing this week, it's more for the Fight Island guys, but if you want to steal their shine, by all means, any fighter that walks out to that song this week, they will be immortalized <laughs> on my wall with a picture forever. So if you want to do it, you will get your picture among the greats, the gods of MMA, George St. Pierre, Demetrius Johnson, Daniel Cormier. That's high on my, that's high on my priority list. Are you going to walk out to that song? Is that what you're that's, saying? That's very high on my priority list. I hope I... Wait, are you I saying you're going to walk out? Because that's just going to spike the ratings. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> never. No. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Good luck. Thank there you. she is. Kayla Harrison, two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo. Uh, I mean, one of the most dominant athletes. And I said after her last fight, she is top 10 pound for pound. Top 10 pound for pound in women's MMA. And a lot of people are giving me a lot of crap for it. I mean, I mean, she might even be top five by the time this is all said and done. And by the way, can we give a shout out to the PFL for those, I mean, those setups? What is going on over there? That's incredible stuff. That was, that was amazing. How are we going to go from that to like the regular Zoom interviews? We've never had anything like that before. Wednesday's card is fun. Kayla, Clarissa, Ray Cooper. The Cooper fight's going to be great. Cooper against Magomed. Magomed, Kherimov. All right, a couple of uh, seconds here. We're going to be joined by Kevin Lee, the Motown phenom. Uh, he took to Instagram recently to let us all know. Actually, Chael Sonnen broke the news first. I don't know how that happened, um, but he did. He did a YouTube video about it, and he uh, told the world that Kevin Lee had been suspended. This is what Kevin wrote. I have tested over the limit allowed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission in my most recent fight in 2018, I was diagnosed with adult ADHD. It has always affected me. I did not discover real treatment for the diagnosis until 2020 when I was recovering from my double knee surgeries. I was prescribed Adderall from a doctor to improve my mental health. I told representatives from USADA, but did not apply for a therapeutic use exemption from the NSAC before my last fight. For that, I truly apologize to the UFC, the commission, my opponent, Dana White, the matchmaker, Sean Shelby and McMaynard, and the fans. It was never my intention to gain an athletic advantage. It was an attempt to conquer the severe anxiety I silently suffer from daily. I am actively cooperating with the Nevada State Athletic Commission and expect to reach an agreement on a sanction. I will use this time to heal and come back stronger. Sorry for my lack of professionalism that led to this disappointment. I will be back. He also uh, tweeted, or excuse me, Instagrammed. There's no real name. Like, there's no name for Instagram, right? Like, you tweet something, you post something on Instagram. Anyway, uh, it was of him pouring out his, uh, I think it's an Adderall bottle filled with uh, pills in the sink and uh, pretty much flushed those bad boys down. So we'll talk to, to uh, Kevin Lee about that in a second. But first, I uh, do want to let you know about, uh, I'll do this now, our good friends over at DraftKings. DraftKings, as you know, is the official sports betting partner of the UFC. So I guess I guess last week was the music week and, and Monday's no music week. There it is. There it is, Frankie. Were you asleep by the wheel? What's going on? Sleep by the wheel, at the wheel. UFC 267 action is live in Abu Dhabi, a.k.a. Fight Island, a.k.a where the Island Boys hang out this after uh, this Saturday afternoon. And DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC, has a knockout offer for the light heavyweight title bout between Jan Wachowicz and Glover Teixeira. New customers can bet just $5 on either fighter and win $200 in free bets if they do. Will the champion retain his belt? That's Jan Wachowicz. Or 
Will Glover Teixeira, the veteran from Brazil, snatch it from him? Bet just $5 on the UFC 267 main event and win $200 in free bets if your fighter wins. Now, DraftKings is safe, it's secure, and it's reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code THEMMAHOUR. Throw down just $5 on the UFC 267 main event and win $200 in free bets if your fighter wins. Again, that's code THEMMAHOUR this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, official sports betting partner of the UFC. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit required and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Yeah. Thank you very much to DraftKings. Please support them because they support us. All right. Without further ado, let's go back to the Zoom machine and say hello to the aforementioned Kevin Lee, a.k.a. the Motown Phenom. There he is. Kevin Lee, kind enough to join us once again. Kevin? How are you, my man? Thanks for doing this. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. Uh, you good to, I hear you. Yeah, it's a little echoey this time. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, maybe closer? Yeah, right. Probably these headphones, you Try it without the headphones. Do you mind? How about now? Is that better? Way better. A thousand times better. Okay. You know, I'm not with the... Uh, Oh, shit. Wow. What happened? You turned us what's off? Your, what's your lock code? Huh. <laughs> okay. You're back. Can you hear me? Or you... I got you. Oh, now you just... <laughs> well, we know it's you. Wow. We'll get this right. I believe in you. No problem. It's technology. Oh, he popped up and then he left. What's going on? (laughs) What happened? Does the phone keep uh, locking up? Oh. You can hear me, Kevin? He'll be back in a second. All right. We're going to reconnect with Kevin here. Um, I think he probably... I don't know what happened there. Sometimes you lock the 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 phone. You know these new iPhones. They're cra- I need to get a new iPhone. You know there, there's there's actually a part of me that doesn't want to get the new iPhone because I feel like I'll use my phone even more, and I don't want to use my phone even more. And so I'm actually holding off. I want, in a weird way, my phone to be as crappy as possible so that I am not enticed to use it even more. Um, I'm also very sad to report that my Conor McGregor Reebok toy has uh, suffered an untimely demise. It fell off the shelf right over there. And these things happen. You know, Fedor called us out last week. Uh, these things happen in MMA podcasting. So there you go. Anyway, let's go back to the uh, Zoom machine and say hello to Kevin. Kevin! All right, we're good. Yeah. What, what happened there? <laughs> My fault. You know, I'm, I'm not with PFL. This is not the most professional. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was professional. I got to admit, that was some professional stuff. Jeez, did you see those interviews? That was some high quality stuff. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Now, 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 not so much. I mean, somebody else's phone, headphones. Uh, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Great to talk to you. Yeah. So, what happened, man? Uh, we find out. Some wait first before I ask you what happened. How did Chael Sonnen break this news? Can I ask you that? Where Where did he get the scoop? Uh, I went to know first. You know, Chael was the is the right guy to go to about uh anything drug related, and you know, I go to him for a lot of advice. So uh, he's one of the guys that in, in this sport I, I definitely trust a lot. Okay. So what happened? Tell us what happened. So, uh, yeah, I popped for um, Adderall in my last fight. Um, I didn't apply for the TUE like I should have. Um, I spoke with Nevinsky a couple months before the fight when I actually uh, was taking the, the drugs. Um, you know, told him it was from a doctor and all. He told me to apply for the TV and uh, I thought that I wouldn't need to because I would get off of it soon enough for the fight. But uh, I guess I still had a small amount of it in my system left. So had you applied for it, none of this would have come out? It wouldn't have been an issue at all? Yeah, it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, but, you know, 
and I, I got a little arrogant in it. You know, I, I thought that I would be fine without it and that it just would get out of my system like much faster. But I think with not cutting as much weight and um, it was just some, I, I, I could, I should have applied for the two weeks. I, I still kind of kick myself in the ass over it because it's a, it's a legit prescription. It's a legit uh, diagnosis. Um, and I think I just went about it in an unprofessional way to get that done. So I'm no expert when it comes to Adderall. Doesn't seem to me like a like a performance enhancer. Why is it banned? In like based on what you've learned. I mean, it's not. It's not a performance enhancer. Um, at least from what I can tell from it, you know, from using it, uh, it definitely works. You know, it, it, it enhances life for sure, um, and it helped me to solve a lot of issues that I've been dealing with for a very very long time. Um, so it, it definitely helps you in life, but I don't necessarily know if it ever helped uh, make me bigger, faster, stronger, or even focus more during the fight. Um, and I think that's one of the things you can even see during this fight is I kind of lost that focus in the second round. And um, I wish I could have been on it. You know, I probably should have just smoked weed or something. Then it would have probably been a, a whole lot better. How long have you been using it for? It's, it's been about a year um, since June of 2020. Um, I first got diagnosed in 2018 and I just kind of like did the same old same that I had been doing all for all them years up until after the second knee surgery. Um, then I, then I realized like, Oh, I need actual help in order to quit being the same old kid that's doing the same things. Now, and, and when you're saying like the same old kid who's doing the same things, what do you mean by that? Like, what was the issue? What were you trying to correct? I mean, ADHD, I think is one of those things that, kind of gets tossed out a lot. Um, I think a lot of people kind of have it. Um, but for some, it's, it's more extreme than others. For me, it's, it's, I lose track of every fucking thing, you know? And, and I've kind of always been that way and, and kind of always only been interested in the things that really, really interest me. If it's a life or death type of a situation. Um, but that's not always the best way to be as an adult. You know, you got to be interested in things that you can't do. So when I couldn't train and I couldn't just fight my way out of it and just focus only on the gym, uh, that's when some of those issues kind of like really came to the front, forefront. Um, and it's just something that I needed to do to enhance my mental health, you know, um, and quit ignoring it all the time and just kind of drown it in and fight. So before you came on, I read... Uh, the first Instagram post that you wrote back, I think it was on Wednesday, and you mentioned the ADHD, mm -hmm. but you also mentioned anxiety. And correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, like the two don't necessarily go hand in hand. Do you suffer from both? You know, I, I, I don't... It took me a long time to figure out what anxiety meant, you know, because you hear so many people say it, like, what do you mean? Like, you're, you're, you're anxious. What does that mean? Um... And it's like your brain is always like looking to do something, looking for something new, looking for some like more stimulus, you know? Um, so I, I, I say, yeah, I, I definitely suffer from both a, a, a lack of focus and uh, constantly looking for a different stimulus. Your, uh, your screen uh, frozen us here, um, but I can still hear you just fine. It's just- Did we get cut off? Are you frozen? No, no, you're frozen, but I can hear you perfectly. I just don't know why the screen Fucking froze. Oh shit. So, so Mexico. We can uh, we can fight through it. Hear you? Are you there? I still hear you. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I'm in, I'm in fucking Mexico right now. I guess the Wi-Fi is shit. Oh, what are you doing there? Um, friend's birthday. So you know. Respect. Some some R and R. Yeah, I can't believe you're doing this interview when you're on vacation. Thank you. I, I had no idea. It's always working, Ariel. You're always working, bro. I know. You should be at the pool having like a pina colada or something. So thank you very much. I appreciate this even more so than no, no pina no no pina coladas, you know, but I'll, I'll have me a little smoothie, a little orange smoothie yeah, or something, yeah, you know, respect. trying to get sober here. Come on. Respect, respect. Yeah. So what what is it? Uh six months suspension? Yeah, it'll be a six months. Um, which sucks. I, I was really hoping to come back in December and fight again. Um, but I'll use the six months to get get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. And then come back a whole lot better, you know. And and does it go like? Is it retroactive to the the? So the fight was what uh, August thirtieth, I think it was, right? Was it August thirtieth? Yeah. So is it retro? Twenty uh, eighth. Twenty eighth, right? Twenty eighth. So is it retroactive? So basically, I mean, you'll be you'll be free to return in what uh, February or so, right? March. March. 
you feel like this was embarrassing? How, how, do, how are you handling this? Because, you know, sometimes when people hear about USADA, they brand you as a cheater. I don't feel like this was cheating, to be honest with you. But how, how are you dealing with it? It was definitely embarrassing. Um, I mean, I still am just a little bit. But it was more so embarrassing to tell people what's actually wrong with you, you know? Um, but since I came out with it last week, I felt a little bit better, like the, the reception to it has been better than I expected. I was expecting more people to kind of kick me while I was down, but um, I've had a whole lot of people that I actually respect that have reached out to me and said that they deal with the same issues. Um, I think just it doesn't get talked about a lot. So it's a little embarrassing for me to talk about it, but uh, I'm less embarrassed about the actual issue itself these days. No, nah, you shouldn't be embarrassed at all. And anyone that surprised you that reached out? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. But I won't, I mean, I'm not going to say their names. I'll, okay. I'll let them, uh, you know, if they don't want to talk about it, then I won't talk about it for them, you know? Okay, fair enough. Um, and I wasn't implying that you should say their name. I was just wondering, like, you know, sometimes when you're feeling down and someone reaches out and says, I deal with the same thing, it can lift your spirits. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely happened. I mean, and it happened multiple times, you know, from people that I really respect. So um, that definitely made me feel a lot better about it. And it, um, makes it a little easier to be open with people, you know? Now, you also posted a video of you pouring out the bottle into your sink. What are you trying to say? Like, will you now never take Adderall ever again? It could help you, though. You just have to apply for the TUE. It could, but honestly, I don't think, um, I don't think dependency on anything is good. And uh, I, I knew that even, like, I went through four scripts, right? Um, four different times they wrote me a prescription. Um, and about halfway through the second one, I kind of knew that I was going to eventually get off of it. Um, and when I went back to get the new script, I, I told the doctor that. And he said, uh, he was like, yeah, you can, but it's it's like taking my reading glasses off. Like I can read better with them on. Um, but I didn't, I don't, I didn't agree with him. You know, I, I think it's something that can definitely be healed. And uh, it's not something that I need to, it's not like reading glasses, you know, like I, I think I can get better with this kind of stuff and eventually get to the, the point where I don't need them. So I don't feel like I need them anymore. I think I can, I, I think I've learned enough lessons from taking them and the shit works, but I've learned enough lessons that I don't need it. Did you feel like you were getting addicted to them? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a, yeah, there, there's a part of that. You know, I've got an addictive personality anyway. Um, but once I realized, like, oh, this shit actually works, that 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 uh, can get dangerous. How many were you taking a day? Two, two a day. That was the most. Um, sometimes I skip days, and sometimes I, you know, I, I never really stick to what doctors tell me to do. So, what else are you addicted to? Fighting for sure, um, which I need to revive that addiction. Um, I'm addicted to training and fighting. Um, I was addicted to alcohol too for a little while. Um, I, think, I think for a long while. I'm not even going to say a little while. I ain't, ain't going to downplay it. Like, you know, I would train all day and then get drunk at night. Um, that's something that, that I need to curb a lot too, which I feel better now that I have. What, how long ago was that when you were training all day and drinking at night? Shit, this is fucking forever probably. <laughs> probably like, uh, I, think, I think it really started maybe... Three years ago? It started three years ago. Yeah. When did it end? Two months. Oh my three god. Months. Two months before ago? This, before this last fight. So in in the prime, as of now, there's still much more to come. But like you're fighting Tony Ferguson, you're fighting big fights, you're training all day and getting drunk at night. Wow. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, I think a lot of fighters do that. I ain't gonna lie to you. Really? In the in the in the in the midst of a training camp, like at the height of it all. No, not not in training camp. You know, I've always been disciplined um, during training camp. You know, for the six weeks or or sometimes four weeks or whatever it is, I I know how to like. I'm just a disciplined person. I feel like, um, so I know when to stop. Is it's the problem came like when there is no fight coming up, and it's just like okay, I'm just I'm just around. Like all right, is I don't really have to train that hard tomorrow, so why not? Um, that's the part that I really want to cut off and cut back on, you know? How 
have you done that? I mean, two months is somewhat significant, but it's obviously just two months. How have you been able to stop doing not be that? drunk all the time? Cold, yeah. cold turkey, baby. Cold turkey. Damn. And and you're like you're in cold Mexico turkey, right now for a friend's birthday, you're not drinking? No, no. A little bit of wine here and there, but no. Man, that's not no, cold turkey though. It, you know? A little bit of wine is not cold turkey. True. True. Uh, I think I think the issue is uh getting drunk. It's not so much like the alcohol, it's like the getting drunk and kind of uh like escaping, you know, escapism is is the problem. It's not necessarily like the, the alcohol necessarily, it's the getting drunk part. So yeah. No no more getting drunk. I I, I, I wish I can go the rest I'm gonna try and go the rest of my life without ever being drunk again. Wow. Not to say I won't drink, you know. I, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a dumb, you know, like oh, I'm just never gonna drink again. Like I'm not gonna say that, but I would like to go forever without being drunk, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you you said this kind of started around three years ago. I can't help but note the timeline. Does it coincide at all with the the passing of your coach Robert Fallis? No, no, not so much. Um, no. Okay. I think if anything, it, it came more on with uh, more attention and in the bigger I got in the sport and um, kind of getting everything that you that you dreamed of at being young, um, that probably intensified it more than anything. Do you worry that uh, at some point when you're older, 50, 60, and your fighting days are done, you'll look back on this time and say, man, I shouldn't have been drinking. I, I, I should have been treating myself like a professional athlete, treating my body with respect when I was, you know, fighting these big fights. Yeah, I mean, I worry about that now. You know, after every fight, um, and I've taken a few L's in the, in the past couple of years, I, I look back and like, damn, what could I have done different? Um, and before, I, I have had the tendency, I think, like a lot of people to kind of put it on somebody else or say it was somebody else that, that, made me do it but um it's more time to sit back and really look at my actual actions you know um and realize nobody else is going to fight these fights for me it's just me so um that's why i want to not be dependent on anything you know not not have anything to help you not have the alcohol not have the pills not have nothing you know because eventually i got to fight these fights i don't think about it when i'm 50 and 60 am i going to look back on it like i look back on it now like this shit keeps me up at night losing to Tony Ferguson and losing to, to Oliveira. Um, those were both very winnable fights for me. So that shit bothers me now. It don't bother me at 60. What about the recent fight against Daniel Rodriguez? In your opinion, why did that not go your way? Yeah, that one definitely bothers me. Um, I think I came back a little too fast off of these surgeries. Um when there still was other issues and I just kind of like, all right, fuck it. I just need to fight again and just drown it again and fight. Um, yeah, that, that one definitely bothered me. I, I lost to a bum in the last fight, you know, I, losing to Tony and losing to Oliveira is one thing, but this last one I lost to a bum and that's never happened before. So, um, yeah, that won't be the hardest. No respect know. for him after going toe to toe with him. I mean, I respect anybody that step in there, but, just because you have respect, you don't mean it's, it, a spade isn't a spade, you know? Damn. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so in, in a weird way, the uh, the suspension, maybe it will allow you not to rush back. Maybe you were saying December. Now it gives you a little more time to, I don't know, take, I don't know. If you if you needed the time, December is, is in two months. It's in less than two months. So yeah. maybe this is a blessing in a weird way. Yeah, in a roundabout way. I, I tell myself that too. Um, I definitely need to get my legs stronger again. Um, that's one thing I noticed, like, as soon as that fight started, uh, that I just didn't have the same legs underneath me that I did before. Um, like, a couple times I tried to pick them up or uh, tried to hold them on the ground, and, and my legs just, they, they aren't as strong as they need to be. So uh, I could take these next two months and build on a little bit of size before I get back into a training camp. So you're right. I, I think it, it'll end up being a blessing in disguise, you know? Um, in the past, just curious, did you apply for a TUE for the Adderall? No, no, I ne never did. I mean, I, t I told USADA about it, yeah. um, and I wrote it on the whereabouts. I mean, uh, not the whereabouts, the... Uh, the uh, like the pre-fight questionnaire the, form, whatever? 
Yeah, every time you take a drug test with you saw it, you got to tell them what you're taking, the supplements yeah. and stuff. Um, so I always wrote it on there, but I never actually applied for a TUE, no. And, and that's simply out of ego? Like there was no re because you were allowed to up to a certain amount, right? No, it's because I fucking need Adderall, uh, Ariel. Like I don't remember to do basic uh, shit. Like all I want to do all day is fight yeah. and then, you know, do some other shit. Like I don't do basic shit. I don't pay bills. I don't, you know, I'm like a little kid, bro. I don't, I don't take care of paperwork. So who does that for you? Who pays the bills for you? Who takes care of that? Adult? Boss? Oh, I can't cuss, huh? That's probably you can cuss. Is. You can do whatever you want. Did we lose him? Damn, that was like a climax to the interview. Say what you will about Kevin Lee, very honest guy, very forthright guy. Tells it like it is. I think the guy who said that our stream was bad was was actually referring to the uh, the Wi-Fi connection. I mean, I feel like the stream is uh, pretty darn crisp, is it not? Pretty crispy. Yeah, pretty crispy. Are we getting him back? I guess so. Yes, maybe. We'll get to. Uh... No. It it doesn't look like it. He's gone. We can't end it like that. I need to have some closure to all of this. How about the phone? Just call him real quick on the phone. Copy that one second. Sorry, Mike. We'll get to Mike in a second. Um, get to Mike in a second. I'm texting Mike right now. He's telling me he's in the waiting room. I just, I just, I can't end the interview like that. Um, so we'll call. We could do a phone, all right? We can just stand by. It's a lot of stress. Just do me a favor and just uh, text uh, Bisping that we'll get to him in a second. We'll get to him at 305. I just need to have some uh, mental closure to all of this. Because that is, uh, that is pretty heavy stuff. And I appreciate him being so honest and forthright about everything. Kevin Lee, one of the good guys in the game. We actually started off a bit on the uh, the wrong foot, but I think we've really developed a nice relationship here. And uh, <laughs> maybe, I mean, maybe there's just no... Is it just not connecting? This is horrible. The phone is ringing. All right, the phone is ringing. Why do I feel like we have a rotary phone back there? I feel like... You know what? I'm just going to call him right here on my... Should I call him right here on my cell phone? Do it like the uh, the Brian Callen thing? Actually, the uh, the phone is busy. Is it busy? Yeah. This is crazy, Bretta. I'm going to try right now. How about that? I just need some closure. Copy that. Let's see if he picks up. Oh, it's actually busy. See? You guys were telling me the truth. Not that I don't believe you, by the way. I do believe you guys. Oh, it's ringing now. Oh, you see that? That's international calling. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, I'm here with you. Unfortunately, we have to get to... We're actually still live right now, and I'm calling you on my cell phone because uh, I was getting impatient. I needed some closure. I didn't want to end the interview like that. Yeah. So I just want to say... I, I thought you were going to come back on. What's that? It, it, it wasn't connecting. All right. What do you want to say? I just wanted to wish you the best, and I, I appreciate you being so honest with us. Oh, appreciate it, Ari. Appreciate it, you know? Uh, yeah, like I said, it's these these things I think not a lot of people talk about. So it's a little embarrassing to talk about them sometimes, but you know me, I don't give a fuck. Don't be embarrassed. Like people, so. You give a lot of people uh, courage to speak up. So uh, do your thing. I wish you the best. And uh, when you get back to America, we can have a proper conversation with good Wi Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have the UFC send me up something nice. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be as willing if it's for me. I don't know if they'll be as willing if it's for me, but it would be a nice gesture. It would be a nice gesture. Uh, enjoy Mexico, my man. Thanks for doing it. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. There he is. Kevin Lee. Take care, Kevin. Uh, kind enough to join us and uh, we shall wish him the best. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's honest stuff. All right, in a matter of seconds, we're going to be joined uh, by the legend himself. A lot of people 
were very excited when I told you that Michael Bisping would be joining us. There were days back in the early days of this show, Michael Bisping was such a big star, you can never get him on. He was such a big deal. He was fighting for belts. He was selling out arenas. He would never have time for us little people. But now that he's retired, he has time for us little people. So let's go to the Zoom machine <laughs> and say hello <laughs> to the count, Michael Bisping. I'm sorry for our tardiness. We had a situation there with Kevin Lee, who's in Mexico. And then, Mike, you would appreciate this as a media guy, he starts getting really deep with us, saying he doesn't, you know, doesn't know how to pay bills, doesn't know how to do all this stuff, and then his connection craps out. Well, first of all, lots of things to say to that <laughs> comment. Number one, I'm not a media guy. You're I'm not a former champion, okay, a Hall of Famer, okay? You're right, you're right. Don't put me in your box, Mr. Helwani. <laughs> Secondly, of course, if somebody starts going deep like that, then of course you got to give them the respect that is due. Thirdly, I also cannot pay a bill. That's why I have my <laughs> wife. I can't, seriously, I can't even log into my bank account. She could be stealing everything. I have no idea how to log in or do any of that. Fortunately, my good lady, the long suffering Mrs. Rebecca Bisping does yes. that. Wait, what do you mean? You like, it couldn't be easier these days to go on your phone and look at your bank account. You have no idea how to do this? No idea. She, we actually had this conversation last night and she said, Mike, you just need the password. I'm like, I don't care. Because anytime I go to my bank account, it scares me. Just every now and again, sporadically, I'll say to Rebecca, okay, what's the balance at? And I'm like, oh God, I thought it would be higher. Do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, but things are good. Things are good. I'm, we're not going hungry over here. We're no. good. We're good. But I leave the finances to Rebecca Bisping. I leave well, you should be getting in the head. Now, now I take trauma to the head, but not in a physical way. I speak to people like yourself, which can be, cause great pain and headaches, yes. but it's not a direct punch. And of course, I'm kidding. Great to talk to you, yeah. Ariel, as always. Yes. One of the best in the business. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing great. And uh, that would just back up my point that you are a media guy because you're doing a lot of talking these days. You're all over the place. You're absolutely killing it. There's a lot to talk to you about. I do have to thank you off the bat. Uh, a lot of people didn't come to my defense when I was being, you know, bullied by a couple other media guys. And you came to my defense, Michael. I have some friends in this business who didn't say a peep, but you came to my defense. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I'm not trying to take sides or anything like that. I yeah, you are. As I it's saw okay. it. Yeah, well, no, I mean, you, you could define it like that. But for me, when I worked with you at Fox or ESPN, whatever, I'll be honest, you were always the epitome of true professionalism. You always turned up. You always knew what was going on. You had done so much research. And for me, certainly back in the day when I was still fighting, I was primarily, I was still a fighter. You know what I mean? So, but I would look at guys like yourself and see the amount of work and the attention to detail that you would put in. And I, it always stood out to me. And then for certain people to say that you never played well with others, as I say, I mean, we, we give each other a hard time, but it's all in the best spirits. Um, and I don't want to say that you've always played very well with me because that sounds weird. <laughs> but still, you have always played with me very well, Ariel. Oh, no, this is going to get clipped off. <laughs> uh, just like some of your other, I've seen some of your other clips where the people are trolling you on your live chat. And uh, you, you, I mean, you play it off well. You play it off well. I feel like all of this, these nice words that you're throwing my way, this is, in a roundabout way, your attempt of uh, to ask me this question, and so I will respond. Yes, I would be happy to consider to be your new co-host on your podcast. I, I hear there's an opening, but I would love to throw out a name, uh, a new name, because I don't think we could go with Believe You Me, because that's very tailored towards you. So tell me if you like this name, and I only say it out of love because we're mates. I wouldn't say it to most people. So tell me if this offends you, A, and if B, you like the name. Okay, you ready for it? Go. Oh. Ariel and the bad eye. I, I, I well, <laughs> I like it. It's creative. I see what you did there, but it's not original, is it? Because Come on. I saw that floating around. Ah, media, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it. I Ariel and the bad eye would be perfect. And I'll tell you this, and we'll move on from Believe You Me in just a second. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, there's been some rebranding. I'm going to rotate co hosts. You know what I mean? Rather than get nailed down to one guy. So if you could find it in your time, Ariel, we'd oh. absolutely be honored to have you on there. But we really got to stop kissing each other's ass. Okay, okay, okay. Let's That's go. not what people want to see. Right. Well, That's uh, not what they want to see or hear. If I'm being honest, I have to kiss your ass again because you just went on this uh, amazing tour across the UK. How many towns did you go to? Yes. Yeah, so initially on that one, and thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and thank you to everyone that bought a ticket. So it was, it was Tales from the Octagon. Yeah. I did four, uh, four cities 
uh, in England. I did Glasgow as well, part of me in Scotland. We were supposed to do Dublin, but due to COVID protocol, we had to postpone that. And, uh, you know, I am not a stand-up comedian. And that's not what this was. It was kind of a tour talking about my own life. But, of course, I've had a very coloured story. Uh, you know, I've got wild anecdotes. So I dressed it all up in kind of a comedic fashion. But it certainly wasn't a stand-up show. And when this came around, you know, a year ago, I was like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But as it started getting closer and closer, I started getting more and more nervous. And then certainly, you know, when I saw the size of the crowds and the people that attended in Manchester, the Manchester Apollo, which is a legendary venue, sold out 3,500 people. And yeah, I fought in front of 15 or 20,000. But when you're just walking out there for 90 minutes by yourself, when you haven't even done an open mic night or anything like that, it's a little daunting. But I got to say, everyone that was there, they had the best attitude. I had just an unforgettable experience. Every night I thought, you can't top this. It can't get any better. Then every night just got better and better. And then it ended in Glasgow and the Scots, they're a wild bunch. So they were up for a good time as well. And it was so good that 2022, we're going back with another tour. We've got 17 dates. Uh, 17? October and November, 17 dates. And I'm not supposed to say this, but if you're uh, on the opposite side of the world, if you could be somewhere that maybe call, that people call down under, then maybe I'll be coming to see you next year as well, but I'm not supposed to say anything. Okay, okay, okay. Australia and New Zealand. Wow, that is amazing. So let me ask you this. Is it possible that you were more nervous doing that than fighting Anderson Silva at the O2? You know, to be honest, that was kind of like my opening bit because people always said, you know, oh, I bet you'd rather be in the octagon than doing this. And I'm like, well, if I was in the octagon, I'd be sort of opposite Anderson Silva right now, about to have my face obliterated. Uh, but it certainly... It was a different type of nerves. I remember when I first ever did my, my first ever acting role, who tap out, did a bunch of movies back in the day and I got offered a part. And of course I took it because it's exciting and who doesn't want to be a part of an action movie. Right. Uh, but I'd never acted before. I'd never done anything like that, but of course I prepared, I worked with an acting coach, but when I got on set in Austin, Texas, I remember we were stood in this kitchen. I had to walk out the kitchen and do the scene, <sighs> the nerves. Oh my God. I was like, put me in an octagon any day of the week. But uh, yeah, no, it went well. And yeah, regarding the tour, again, very, very nervous, but, you know, good nerves. It, it was anxiety simply because I wanted people to enjoy themselves. You know, people have parted ways with their hard-earned money. I want them to enjoy that. that that's, what, that's why I felt the pressure. But as I say, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that everyone had an amazing time. The feedback was incredible. Well, I also think, and I think I said this to you privately, it was the perfect storm because especially over there, They've been jonesing for something MMA related. You are the face of UK MMA. You always be that. You come back after the pandemic. I'm sure people were just like foaming at the mouth just to get out and have a good time and, and, and be close to you, right? Like, I mean, the timing couldn't have been more perfect. Yeah, I don't think anyone was foaming at the mouth. Yes, trust me. me. I've seen but, your but, fans. But, but, but. They look like they have rabies. But, but I, yeah, de definitely. They they were, you know, people have been starved of entertainment for a long time. So I guess in that regard, it was kind of perfect timing. Uh, but but yeah, again, the the, the panic, the passion and the energy that I saw from everyone, it was just, it was mind blowing, you know, and, it, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to go back and do it in the UK. And because I, I had my last ever fight in China. And no disrespect to ch the Chinese community, no disrespect whatsoever, but that's not what forged my career. I forged my career in the UK. I was un uh, unbeaten in the UK. And in my mind, I always wanted one last fight where I could go back and fight in London, put my gloves down in the center of the octagon, that whole thing, you know, you yeah. romance it in your head like it's this big moment. But of course I lost an eye. And my friend said, Michael, what are you doing? You know, you're building this up in your mind. And Audi Attar said the same thing as well. I said, Michael, you're, you're dramatizing this in your mind like it's going to be this big, beautiful moment. And I'm sure it would have been a nice moment, but is it worth going blind for, risking your entire vision for? And of course the answer was no. So that's partly why I wanted to go back, you know, to, uh, to, to show my appreciation for the support that I had over the years. The next time they went back to the UK, when you were debating this, why didn't they just play your music? You come out, you say something to the audience and put the gloves in and have that moment without getting punched. Why didn't they just do that? And then I feel like that would have sufficed. Well, it would have done, but 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 as always, you like to stir the pot. But but the UFC actually went one better. They went one better than that because I got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Is that better? Well, it's pretty goddamn good. It's in Las Vegas. I feel like to you, it no, would no, have no. Meant but when I was in London, I, it was 2019 sure. for the yeah. Darren Till versus Masvidal fight. Yeah, they 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 ran the feature in the octagon. I got a standing ovation, so I got inducted into the Hall of Fame. So you know, you know. 
I, Where were the gloves? I, I wanted cool the gloves the in the cage. In, like I wanted you to walk into the cage, take off the gloves, and put them in there, and then walk out. Song two, you know? Yeah, well, that's why we got Tales of the Ox gone, buddy. Can't have right. everything you want in this life. Now, do you have to repeat the same story 17 times next year? How are you going to do this? Well, well, obviously, I'm going to tweak it because, okay. you know, I'm going to be in international markets. I'm going to be in Norway. I'm going to be in Sweden. I'm going to be wow. in Amsterdam, places like that. So, uh, number one, I'm assuming these have a good command of the English language because <laughs> my Dutch and Swedish is not on par. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm going to tweak it a little bit. And even when I was in the UK, the show that I did in London evolved by the time I got to Glasgow. You know what I mean? And and I evolved as as a, not a comedian, a, a, as a showman, if you will, on stage. Um, yeah, no, it, it was an unreal experience, but every night it got different and different. And now after do, having done it four times, I'm filled with ideas. I'm like, okay, here's what I could have done there. Here's what I could do there. So uh, yeah, I've got a year to prepare and a year to tweak, take this story out, add that one in there, remove this one about my love for the UK. And all oh, you guys were so amazing because in Norway, they might be like, we're not in in England, buddy. Do you know what I mean? So I'll tweak it, but the the essence of the show will kind of be the same thing. Do you, you have know, a prompter? My downs. Prompter? Pardon notes? Me? Do you have notes? Prompter? Oh, no, it- no, no, no. No teleprompter. Wow. So I went out there for 90 minutes because I was supposed to have uh, someone on stage with me the whole time, but then uh, that kind of fell out. So I, it became me by myself on stage for 90 minutes. That wasn't the plan. And so the three weeks before it, I lost a tremendous amount of weight, A, because I was riddled with anxiety and sleepless nights, but also because I would I have this run that I do by my house out in the hills. But I was doing that every day, but I wasn't running. I was walking. I was just rehearsing it into my phone day in, day out. But I didn't want a teleprompter because I don't want it to be robotic. I don't want it to seem like I'm reading off a teleprompter. I got to speak from the heart. That's got to be off the cuff. React to the audience. And the thing was, we were supposed to have a Q and A at the end of every one, but the show ran so long, and then the audience participation and people bringing me drinks on stage and three thousand people chanting down it, down it. I was hammered by the time I came off stage every night, and and we didn't have time for a Q and A because you know it just ran over every time. So uh, next year, you say it's October, November is the next tour. Okay. October yeah. October and November, we're going to be doing the UK again and mainland Europe, various countries. And then, yeah, I'm not supposed to say anything okay. but down under in November. I, I feel like that was, again, a subtle way. If you need me to be the Q&A guy for you to help you out, I mean, I could talk to my people. We can try to cut a deal. We, we also are having some uh, American dates. Oh, so, wow. You know, well, you're probably going to give it definitely. to like Gareth or one of these other guys that claim to be Oh, come on. You're the number one guy, Ariel. Everyone knows this. Everyone knows this. It would be weird if more people came for me than for you to your own show. Well, that would be weird. But still, on, on the deal that we're going to cut, I'll still benefit financially incredibly. <laughs> uh, now, the other thing is, and, and we're really going like inside baseball here, if you know that term, but I'm fascinated by this stuff. Because lately, Michael, and I shouted you out as well, you're killing it on the YouTube page. And I think this is very interesting because you are, I mean, (laughs) my buddy DC totally ripping you off. Let's be honest. Now, maybe you took a a page out of Chael Sonnen, who was one of the first to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what prompted this? Because now you're like a machine. Every day there's a new video from you. Yeah, no, it's really exciting. I never had... Uh, I, I didn't know there was this whole YouTube world out there and I actually didn't know how much revenue there is to be generated from it. I'm like, holy shit, I got to get involved. I'm a little late to the party, but I'm wading into that party, hammered drunk and taking over. Um, because, yeah, no, I was doing the podcast, you know, obviously, believe you me. And then that kind of what inspired me because I realized that there's there's such a market, you know, business opportunities via YouTube. Um, so, yeah, I started doing the videos myself. I did a couple actually just to oblige a sponsorship responsibility and I thought I'll stick it on my YouTube because I I had a YouTube page channel but I never used it so I had like a hundred followers or something it was embarrassing but I thought we got to start somewhere and then the support was overwhelming you know and and we're a quarter of a million subscribers like over six weeks or something like that I've got a brilliant producer Brantendo and we're actually in the uh the the midst of hiring out a studio we're building multiple sets we're launching multiple shows it's it's really really exciting um and I never thought at 42 years old I'd be sitting here and getting so invested in the YouTube business but it's uh, it's actually very rewarding and when it's something of your own, which you've built, you know what I mean? And no one can tell me what to do. And it's, it's my channel and it's my vision and all the rest of it. It, it's, uh, it feels nice. And so, I mean, th- that's the other thing. The production value is great. Where's that studio, by the way? Is that, is that in your house? 
where you, not not this one here because I think this one is in your house, but the one where you do the YouTube videos. That's a high quality set with the lighting and everything like that. Where is that? Yeah, it, no, this is actually here. It, it is all in the lighting, buddy. Oh, so we got lights everywhere. Wow, the producer's very, very clever. At, you know, creating mood lighting and stuff, and it's so great. We've, we've invested in a lot of sound and lighting and camera equipment and whatnot. And uh, yeah, no, the, the production's really good. But as I say, we're going to develop multiple sets because every day you don't want the same backdrop. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We want to vary it up a little thing, a little bit. And we've got some ideas for some shows that we're going to be dropping. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it's exciting times. And on top of everything else, the tours and obviously the UFC commentary, uh, I'm, I'm releasing my own NFT series with uh, BlockAcid.co. With myself, Wayne Rooney, and a bunch of other sporting legends. Uh, so go to BlockAcid.co. The NFT drops start of November, and uh, they're, they're going to be mind-blowing. You can win uh, a trip to a UFC event. You can come for a training session with me in Los Angeles, all types of stuff. So blockacid.co, check that out. Yeah, there's not enough hours in the day at the moment, Ariel, but but I'm, as a former fighter, and I think not only fighters, most athletes, they're always terrified of their post-athletic career, you know, and that always scared me. You know, I, I didn't want to go back to working in the factories or whatever and being broke again and sitting there and thinking, remember those days that were good, you know? Uh, so, you know, that, that's what kind of kept me fighting and sticking around so long, even when my body was broken. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy and fortunate and lucky to say that things, things are going fantastic. And the reason they can go fantastic is because you have the support of the people. I always see people shouting out your YouTube and even reading in the comments are like, man, this is the best page in the game right now, blah, blah, blah. Could you have ever dreamed around 10 or so years ago when you're, you know, spitting at Jorge Rivera's corner that the fans would love you this much? Because let's be honest, Mike, at some point they hated you. Like you were public enemy number one. Now you're like one of the biggest baby faces in the game. Baby face is a pro wrestling term, by the way. Good guy. I know you're not a big wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever think that it would turn out like this for you? You know what? To be honest, it, it is incredible. It is crazy. And, and listen, I know back in the day. I didn't help myself. I had a lot of stupid things to say. Like part of my act was going to be the Matt Hamill fight. You know, I'm like, oh, and then I had my big fight in London and it was an incredibly close fight and it could have gone either way. And I should have said, wow, Matt, what a great fight, you know, but, but that's not what I said. And then I had it already on the media. Here's what I said afterwards. Cause I acted like a total dickhead in that interview. And, and, and I was around a set of people. I was around a team back then that weren't necessarily a good influence on me. You got to remember I'm 42 now, you know, I was 25, 26 back then, you know, it was a long time ago and I have grown up and I have matured. Uh, and I think once I started also working on Fox Sports, Sports, and then obviously now ESPN and the UFC, people saw kind of saw my personality a little bit and realized a lot of the time I'm just joking. But when things are written in print, you don't get the context. But 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 more than anything, I, I was a dickhead. I was a dickhead back in the day. I was, but I was a very different person. I was a fighter. I mean, it was literally my job to fight everyone. I had this chip on my shoulder. I really did. You know what I mean? And sometimes... Um, it was regrettable, the things that came out of my mouth. But fortunately, you know, I've been lucky that I've been able to stick around long enough that I can change people's opinions. You know, because I look back and I see some of the things I used to say. I think, wow, oh, my God, why did I say that? What was I thinking? What an asshole. What a cocky son of a bitch or whatever, you know. So, uh, so yeah, no, certainly some of the times I definitely deserved it. Some of it, sometimes I didn't, but whatever. That's just, you know, when you put yourself in that box, when you become the heel or whatever, that's the way it goes. Is there a moment that makes you really cringe if someone brings it up or you see the clip that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said this. I wish I could take this one back. There's many. There is many over the years. Almost any old interview. When, when I used to talk more like this, you know, because yeah. I, when, when, I, when I see myself back on Ultimate Fighter and that, my voice is well changed. Yeah. It, it, Why is it really that? And, is it because of America? Well, because, and I talk about this on my tour as well, because when I first moved out here, remember on the Ultimate Fighter, I used to be subtitled. But now I commentate the UFC. That's because uh, I've changed the way I talk. Like I remember, uh, this is part, this is on the show, but um, I went to a McDonald's drive-thru with Audio Tar. And I said, can I get two coffees, please? And she's like, what? I'm like, can I get two coffees, please? She's like, what? I'm like, look, listen, I know I have an accent, but it's two syllables. Coffee, coffee. <laughs> can I get two coffees, please? They went, oh, you mean coffee? I'm like, yes, coffee. And then she says, what flavor? 
I'm like, what do you mean? What flavored? <laughs> Fucking coffee flavored. He's like, we don't do coffee flavored. I'm like, you must what? do coffee flavored <laughs> coffee. There's no way. She goes, we do vanilla, caramel, and strawberry. And and, and I'm like, I don't want any of that. I just want a coffee. She goes, oh, you mean original? I'm like, oh my god, yes. And she's like, sir. You have a very strong accent. And then I say, well, guess what? Well, you're fucked because it's Darren Till and his teammates in the next car. Good luck with that one, <laughs> you know. But but still, there you go because they couldn't understand me. So I had to tweak it a little bit. And I remember um, at Fox, uh, um, God, George Greenberg. Yes. Was it George Greenberg? Yep, yep. Yeah, George. He was a very nice man. And he kind of, he wanted to send me to elocution lessons. Wow. You know, because of how I spoke. He said, Mike, we like your energy. We like your passion. But we're struggling to understand you a little bit. You've got to slow down and pronounce your words. So by doing that, it's it's just subconscious that kind of affected my accent a little bit, you know. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So There's the disclaimer. Did you go to a professor? Did you go to like a teacher for this stuff? I did not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did not take advantage of the many, many wondrous opportunities that I should have done over the years. Okay. But now you're fine. You don't like, no one says it to you now, right? UFC, ESPN. No, no, that's right. And, and that's the thing. Like when I, but when I'm talking on a, you know, I'll overemphasize or, or, or uh, punctuate certain words. Cause you have to, you know, when I'm chatting with my mates, if I'm sat at a bar having a beer, yeah, people might not, you know, who, who was I with? So some people back in England and the told they're like, holy shit, your accent's got way thicker. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm with my people. Do you know what I mean? I can, I can talk normally. So, but uh, yeah, you know, things change. You get older, you know, you, you, uh, you grow, you mature, you get a different accent. <laughs> uh, these things happen in MMA, as Gus Johnson once said. In, in the UK, they always loved you. They would always run through a wall for you. They always supported you despite some of the controversies. Why do you think they don't, and, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have a different take on this. It feels like now the top fighter out of the UK is Leon Edwards. I don't feel that same passion for Leon Edwards from the fans. And I think that's unfortunate because I think he's a tremendous fighter who's gone screwed over. If I'm being honest, he should have fought for a belt already, but that's neither here nor there. Why do you feel like they would go through a wall for you even before you ever accomplish much? And with Leon, it's been a little slower to, uh, to develop. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not sure if that's necessarily accurate. Okay, you know, he does have tremendous support, and I know Darren Till also has tremendous support. Obviously, Darren's, you know, he's fallen on some tough results recently, but his ride isn't over. He's still only 28 years old. Leon's incredible, you know, but he, he's he's a man of fewer words. You know, he's not a loudmouth. He's not a cocky idiot like I was. Um, but also, I think just recently we haven't had an event in the UK for over two years now, so it's been hard to um, you know for him to feel it and for you to feel it for everyone to feel it you know I, I think right now UK mixed martial arts is in one of its strongest places I mean at the weekend we had Mason Jones on I mean what is going on down in Wales Jack Shaw and Mason Jones some of the talent that's coming out of there is phenomenal Paul Craig and some other Scots Molly McCann Leon Arnold Allen you know a lot of these get Tom Aspinall I think Tom's going to be a future heavyweight champion for sure so UK MMA right now I think is at its strongest part uh, all we need is some U event, UFC event back on UK soil, um, you know, to, to really give, you know, the fans what they want. Jai Herbert is not going to be happy that you didn't mention him, number one. Jai Herbert was incredible. <laughs> Do you get me, bruv? Yeah, he was incredible at the weekend. My God, what a knockout. Shout out, Jai. Shout out all of you. Yeah, um, it's, it's so nice because now, you know, when I was competing, because I've, I've changed as a person so much, you know, Michael Bisping, the fighter, doesn't exist anymore. You know, so as I say, I've definitely gone soft in my old age. But, but now... Uh, and I hope I'm not overstepping them up, but I'm kind of like Uncle Mike now to a lot sure. of these people. And I'm giving them advice. And, you know, I, 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 and, and I love that. It feels great to be able to just not lecture them, but just give them a little bit of advice here and there and what to do in the training situations and on their opponents and things. Because a lot of people reach out to me via social media and I'm always more than happy to give a little bit of advice and maybe get them on my podcast and try and bring awareness to who they are and their personality and all the rest of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy being old Uncle Mike of the, the UK MMA community. So it's nice I'm still involved. A typical Mancurian move to omit the face of UK MMA, one Paddy Pimblett of Liverpool. Oh, didn't mention him. Um, what is his ceiling? No, no, Paddy, see, that, it's an embarrassment <laughs> it is, of riches it right is now. Amazing. That, that, is that's amazing. why. I mean, my God, a star is born with Paddy Pimblett. My God, what a debut and what a character. What is his ceiling, though? Is he championship material in your opinion? <sighs> we don't know yet. 
that that is yet to be seen. Of course, he came in with a stellar pedigree. His, his uh, UFC debut went well. He got clipped a couple of times. But like my old boxing coach, Mark Kinney, used to say, you don't go in the rain without getting wet. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's an MMA fight. Fair play. He got clipped, but then he got the knockout. I know he's got great grappling. He's got excellent jujitsu, you know, but he, what is he, featherweight or lightweight? He's lightweight. Lightweight, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it's probably the toughest division, you know, but certainly on paper, and he has the mindset. You know, the mind controls everything. So Paddy has the confidence, he has the mindset, and it seems like he has the work ethic, even though I think he's ballooned up to like 220 pounds since his last <laughs> fight. So he might want to stay off the bevies and, and get his fat ass back in the gym. But uh, I'm sure he knows what he's doing. But I, I'm, I'm very excited to see, you know, see the ride. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you were cage side this past weekend uh, in Las Vegas at the Apex. By the way, a uh, side note before I ask you the real question I wanted to ask you there. Um, the events at the Apex for you, I know they're very, um, it, it's probably very convenient, right? You're at the hotel, you walk over, you go back. It's all like this one little world. Do you, do you miss doing the events at the big, like, are, are you tired of the Apex at this point? And again, I don't, the Apex has been a godsend. It's been incredible. Like the fact that they had the foresight to put this together, who would have known the, the pandemic, but it's just been incredible for the UFC. So I'm not crapping on it, but mm. I'm sure there's a part of you as a broadcaster who misses, because you're doing these fight nights that don't have a huge crowd behind you, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the Apex, as you said, was such a godsend for the UFC. It allowed them to continue pushing on almost every single weekend. And, and more so than that, it gave the fighters and the UFC employees. It didn't affect ev anyone's bottom line. So it was incredible. And of course, great for, for everyone, including me. You know, I still had a job. And yeah, it is convenient. I just drive down. It's three and a half hours. And when the fight's finished, I drive home. Sometimes I get home at one o'clock in the morning. Sometimes it's 8 p.m., you know. Wow. So I wake up in my own bed on a Sunday morning. Now, pre-pandemic... Um, I, I might be going to China or Uruguay. I'd leave on a Wednesday. I get back on a Monday sometimes. And then on the Wednesday, I have to go again. So believe it or not, it's a little more convenient right now. Right. But uh, of course, I want the pandemic to piss off. Um, <laughs> but, 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 you know, in, 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 I, I will say this, they've opened up to a select crowd now in, in the Apex. And they still run, you know, that amazing highlight package that they show before the main card goes on and the crowd's on their feet. So it's, it, it's like a weird, like, little cult select fight club vibe in there now. And there, there is an atmosphere. At the start of the pandemic, you could hear a pin drop, you know, which did bring a different kind of intensity to it. It definitely created a different dynamic. But now with the crowd, it's, it's great. You know, and I cannot wait to be back in full in front of a, uh, you know, a sold out arena. So what's your take on Paulo Costa and the way he handled the week and, and the repercussions? Because at the end of the day, based on what we know, 20 percent for the way in which he behaved to me feels like a slap on the wrist. I think Vittori should have asked for 40 to 50 percent because he was so blatant about the whole thing. What was your take on all of that? Yeah, I mean. I, I, we'll get to the fight in a minute because yeah. I, I, I take my hat off to both of them. What an incredible fight. And that's another thing. I find myself sitting there as a commentator now looking at these fights just on the other side of the fence and I'm blown away. I think, wow, these men and women are crazy. You know, <laughs> that they do this to one another. And then I think you used to do that between you idiot. Uh, regarding the weight cutting thing, I, I'm always hard on people that don't make weight, right? There's only two things we can control. You turn up on in shape and on weight. If you're not doing that, you're not fulfilling your contractual, your professional obligations. You're disrespecting the sport, you're disrespecting your opponent, your team, and you're disrespecting yourself as well, you know? So, uh, I, and I like Paolo. I'm a fan of his and the way he carries himself, I have no issue with him. But that whole debacle was was kind of inexcusable, you know, and, and like he didn't, he wasn't apologetic. He didn't really care. It was 195, then it was 205. It's not what you want to see, right? It was very regrettable, but it's in the past. And fortunately, Marvin got the win anyway. Had he got the, had he been beaten, uh, I think I'd feel differently. And I feel like a lot of people, especially Marvin would feel differently, but he got the win and he got the win in an incredible fight. I mean, how Marvin Vittori took those shots, took that head kick. Costa was ripping to the body. Of course, uh, Vittori outlanded him. He was working busier. But the big, nasty, disgusting shots that echoed around the bloody apex when they landed all belonged to Costa. And he looked gigantic in there. Marvin's a big guy. He's a big, strong, scary dude. But Costa looked like the Incredible Hulk. He, look, he almost looked like Vito Belfort on steroids, but not quite. Um, so, like the Incredible Hulk squeezing his penis, covered in veins. <laughs> 
But um, <laughs> you know, he 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 was scary. But Marvin took all those shots and never took a backward step. Pretty much, I have so much respect for both men and so much respect for Marvin the way he handled that whole scenario. You know, he didn't complain. He didn't feel like a victim. He went out there, met him head on, right, and fought fire with fire and won an amazing fight. And fair play to Costa as well, because over five rounds, it looked like he was getting tired, but he continued to dig deep. And he did that against Yoel Romero as well. But this was five rounds, not three rounds, you know, and he still pushed and he was still dangerous. He still had high output. Yeah, I was on my feet most of that fight. I compared Marvin to you back in June especially at the pre-fight press conference with Izzy, he was so emotional in that press conference. And I felt like it was almost like when you were early in your career, you would get very emotional before your fights. And then you look at your fight against Luke Rockhold at 199, the, the, the second one, you were as calm, cool, and collected as can be. I hope he learns. And I think that Marvin now has more fans than ever by the way in which he handled last week. I hope he takes a page out of you and, and out of your book and realizes, hey, maybe I don't have to act so fiery. Maybe I can be, right? Like there's some similarities there between the two of you and the, the arc of your career. I think at the end of the day, you will have had a greater career than him. That's no knock on him. You're just, I think, a better fighter. But at the end of the day, like there's a lot that he can learn from you. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of, there's a lot that a lot of fighters can learn about controlling their emotions. You know, because part of the role as a commentator, we have fighter meetings on the Wednesday before. So we get to speak to them and talk about the training camp and all the rest of it. And I always see the similar kind of themes, you know, the confidence, the self-doubt, the inner voice, the, the dialogue that you have with yourself. And it's, it's always the same thing. And a lot of people, they want to speak to sports psychologists and therapists and all the rest of it. But a big thing is, is your temperament going in there. When I was young in my career, I used to close my eyes. I used to think about all the sacrifices I made. And I used to try and get myself mad and angry because I I knew when I was mad and angry, I was a force to reckon with. And that might get you through 95% of the people out there, but you're not going to beat the true elite. And I might have said this speech before, so I apologize if people have heard it. But, you know, if you're in a mad, angry, frantic state of mind, you are never the best version of yourself. If you're commentating right now, if I'm doing a podcast, if you're doing anything, if you're with your wife trying to have a nice dinner, if you're mad and pissed off, you're not good at anything because you're acting out of emotion. And when you're going up against the best martial artists on the planet, you can't be acting out of emotion. You've got to be cool, calm, and collected. You've got to be in the moment, doing the right things, reacting for the right reasons, you know? And, and it, it, it takes a long time to be able to get to that balance. And I think one of the first times was Luke Rockhold at UFC 199. And the clear uh, display of that was beforehand, I was cracking jokes with Jason Perillo when we were in the octagon as opposed to... <laughs> pacing up and down and looking intense. I just spat everywhere, by the way. And then it's okay, but there's a screen. Yeah. Uh, and then um, when we squared up, I went to touch gloves with Luke. I'm like, touch? And he's like, no, no, no touch. And in typical Luke fashion, he still touched gloves. Not the smartest. <laughs> but, but, but as he said, no touch, no touch. And as I was backing off, I said, no touch, no touch. I'll touch you in a second, motherfucker. Right? And I'm not just bragging because that was a witty line because it, it was. But that just shows how cool I was in that moment to be doing little quips right before a world title fight starts on two weeks' notice. Yeah, and now your best buds rolling around. I hate it, by the way. I hate it. I, I I die inside every time I see you guys rolling. I want you guys to be bitter enemies. I want you guys to be at a card signing in 30 years, old men with walkers fighting each other. I don't want to see you guys laughing around and all this stuff. This is this is nonsense. Yeah. Come on. It's all water under the bridge. I wish him nothing but the best. He's a good guy. I, I always said that about Luke. You know, look at his, uh, I mean, I know you used to be friendly with DC, but now you've turned into a little backstabber. But when <laughs> you were friends with DC, DC's a great guy. And, and the fact that Luke and DC were such good friends for so long, I mean, that says a lot about Luke. I mean, we were just competitors, you know. As I say, in the past when I was fighting, if you were in my division, you were my enemy, as simple as that. And maybe that was kind of a moronic meatheadish uh, view to take, but that's just how I was. You know, I was going to step into a... See, like, I came from this... Realistically, I always talk about doing traditional martial arts, but I came into this from a street fighting background, really. You know, it's kind of a thuggish approach, and, you know, I made the most of it, and I made it work. So in my mind, if I was fighting you, it was on. You know, it was on until the fight was over in the hotel. If I saw you in the street, if I saw you in a restaurant, that's just how it was. That was my approach. If we're assigned to fight, mate, then that's it. We're fighting, you know, in every sense of the word until business is done. And yeah, Rock Hall was a rival, you know. But as I say, I'm I'm a I'm a cuddly, warm butterfly these days, yeah. or pussycat, whatever or, you want to say. YouTuber. Or you're a YouTuber. Who would have thought Michael Bisping, YouTuber? Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's embarrassing. I used to be cool. 
I used to, in fact, I've got the trophies in there to prove it. Coolest guy of the UK, 2008. And as my kids always say, dad, that was 2008. Uh, yeah. We're in 2021. I'm like, okay, shut up. You're right. Uh, two more quick things and then I'll let you go. Speaking of your kids, how about Callum Bisping clapping back at Dylan Dennis, calling him Dildo oh. Dennis? I mean, that was, you must be proud when you see your son. Dylan coming on this program and claiming that he slides into the DMs, that your son says he's his favorite fighter. What's up with this dude? But good on your son. Good on Callum. And good on you, by the way, because I saw <laughs> I saw you pull uh, Dil, Dil Dodanis on, on his nonsense. It's oh. absolute nonsense. And, and, and you couldn't take it. He's like, I'm the most exciting thing and all the rest of it. And you were like, what are you talking about? You haven't had a fight in forever against nobodies. Uh, I don't even like talking about the guy because he's just a stain on mixed martial arts. It was he's more about your son. Connor's- yeah, he's just riding Connor's coattails and he was talking nonsense about Callum. And and yeah, and Callum came out. He said, I'm not sure what's worse, your lying skills or your striking skills. Oh. Uh, so yeah, no, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Callum is a, he's, he's, he's very witty. He's also very argumentative. Uh, right now, he's home because he was supposed to be at the British Open, the wrestling tournament uh, in the UK last week. And that would have got him qualification for the Commonwealth Games next year. But he's torn his meniscus. He's having surgery on Thursday. So he's home, moping about the house, feeling sorry for himself. But uh, yeah, no, thank you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to pass on the I love words. Callum. I will always go to bat for Callum. And he's an OG of the game. He was in the freaking ring throwing a triangle on you back at what? UFC 95 or whatever it was, 105, something like that. Dennis UFC Kent. 70, he did a fly. Oh my gosh. There you go. I mean, he's been around a lot longer than Dylan Dennis. Final thing. And you kind of touch it. I don't know if you were trying to get me to ask you about it. I remember us being at an event and you pull your eye out and you're like, look at this. And you don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. Now you're pulling it out like for free in front of your YouTube audience. Why is that, Mike? Why do you, oh geez. Now you just. Well, well, it's not, it's not because I'm trying to uh, get, uh, bring attention to it. It's because I've, I've come to terms with it. You know, and and for the longest time, because I was still, I, I I've only had this lens, by the way, for uh, when I did Hyperdrive on Netflix. Check that out if you haven't seen it. By the way, two thousand and eighteen, I think that was. Yeah, yeah, two thousand and eighteen. I got this lens. Uh, prior to that, I had these corrective lenses that I would wear, and it had like a fake pupil on it, and it would sit in the middle. But it was always, it would always drift into the middle. So when I was at Fox Sports, I always had like a a compact, a makeup compact. Anytime I went to commercial break, I'd pull it out and I was always putting it back in the middle, you know, because I was still fighting, you know, and I didn't want to draw attention to it. And then people would make comments and I'd be ultra sensitive to it. I was very self-conscious about it. Obviously, I've transitioned. I'm very lucky to working in TV and a little bit of film here and there. And I used to go for auditions and I'd be so self-conscious, you know, I, I, in, in, in the audition, I'm just thinking about my eye. Is, is, there, is there a fake lens in the middle and things like that? Um, you know, but over time, you know, you, you learn to live with this. And then certainly getting this lens, that was a godsend. You know, it cost me $3,500, the best money I ever spent. This office by my house, they hand painted to match the other eye exactly. Wow. I've got to get another one done because my eyeball's shrinking, so it doesn't move quite as well. Uh, and, and yeah, I've, I've just come to terms with it now. You know, I've, I've come to accept it. And, you know, it's part of my story. It's part of who I am, you know. And, and, and walking around like this used to cause me... Um, great discomfort. You know, I, I could feel whenever I would talk to someone, they weren't looking at me. They were just looking at my eye. Do you know what I mean? And they weren't listening to what I said. And it's not all woe is me, but still you have these insecurities, you know, and certainly when you're still trying to fight and then this is a life ending, uh, sorry, career ending injury, you know, it's, it brings a lot of complications and difficulties and things like that. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a thing of the past now. And uh, it's part of my story. Your confidence um, in speaking about it is inspiring. And I think that fans view that as almost like this badge of honor for all the memories and all the great fights. Can you see anything out of there now? Like, is there any, like if you close that other no, eye? Zero, zero. It's black. If I cover that, I can't, I can't, it's just black. Wow. If the lights get turned off, the shade of blackness changes. When a light comes on it, it might go from pitch black to like a really, really, really dark gray. But that's it. Um, what are you missing? Yeah, you know, like a, no retina. Like, what is that? What is the term that, like, what, what don't you have there? Well, no, it's you see, amongst the, the multiple retina uh, terrors that I had, the detached retina, pardon me, uh, I, I got glaucoma. And glaucoma is, and, and the glaucoma was the worst day of my life. It was so bad. The pain was intense. And if you touch your eyeball, it's wet. There's always water going in or some kind of fluid, I'll say water. And there's a drain in your eye. 
right? And glaucoma is where the drain gets blocked. And if you imagine a balloon on the end of a tap filling with water, what's going to happen eventually? Well, the, the balloon's going to pop. And that's what was going on with my eye one day. And, and I, was, I was face down on the floor, howling in agony. And to keep the story short, I went to four different hospitals that day. They shot a laser into my eye to try and clear the drain, sent me home with drugs. That didn't work. This went on a few times. And then at three o'clock in the morning, I had to go in for emergency surgery in Pasadena, howling my head off, howling. Wow. When I got there, I was like motherfucking the nurses and everything because the pain was so bad and then they injected a huge needle into my eye anesthetic and the pain went and I spent the next 20 minutes apologizing and begging for forgiveness because I was like a bear with a sore head literally uh, and then they did a surgery where they put a drain into my eye but when I came around from the surgery they'd misplaced the drain and it kind of was interfering with the iris which is the colored part of your eye it's kind of like a gel disc and the drain was interfering with that and the iris was kind of getting mangled up so I came around on the operating table and I started like you know ah, ah, you know just like spazzing about on the thing and they were like what 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 the pain I'm like ah the pain and suddenly they put another needle in my eye and I blacked out and then I came around the next day and I never saw out of that eye again. And basically, from my understanding, the, the pressure got so high, it just killed all the nerve endings in the eye. Wow. Holy crap. That is insane. I mean, I feel the pain of you just talking about it, but uh, I'm glad to see that you are in good spirits about it, talking about it. You're a freaking legend, Mike. We, we like to it bust each other's is. balls, but uh, what you're doing now is inspiring. Tales from the Octagon, the YouTube channel, the podcast, the commentary. You're you're a renaissance man. You do it all. Blockacid.co. The, the, oh, the NFT, the playline, the acting. Gosh, you're putting us all to shame. Well done. It's, and then you're working out, you're running, you're sweating, you're freaking hitting the bag, you're you're on hills. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well done. Well done, come Mike. On, come on. Thank you. I'm trying though. I'm trying. I'm trying. And you know what? To be honest, I I, I love this. I love this sport. I really do. I'm so passionate about it. And I'm incredibly lucky because, you know, for a former fighter, there's no better job than being a commentator for the UFC. You know what I mean? That, that is like the dream ending to a career. So I, I'm very appreciative to the UFC, of course, massively forever. Uh, oh, a debt of gratitude to Dana White. I know he's not your best friend, but he's, I've always had a great relationship and he's always treated me fairly and as a man. And so thank you, Dana, for that. And as I say, yeah, life's good. More importantly, family's healthy. Kids are healthy. You know, I know it's been a tough time with the pandemic and a lot of people have lost loved ones. So more so than anything, that's the most important thing. But taking up enough of your time, Ariel, I, I, I feel like this is the end. This is Bon Voyage. This is Bon Voyage for now. We'll do it again soon. I'll return the favor if you want. Thank you for doing this. This has been another edition of Ariel and the Bad Eye. Ariel and the Bad Eye. <laughs> Love it. Hey, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you, Mike. All the best. Talk to you soon. Care, there buddy. he is, Michael Bisping, the absolute living legend, the pride of Clitheroe, the man himself, joining us right now on the show. Great stuff. Matter of seconds, we'll be joined by Peter Jan. That is insane. To, uh, to see the eye like that and to see his confidence. Like I said, when I said this earlier in the show, um, we were at an event in Las Vegas and he pulled that eye out, that, that lens out. And uh, it was amazing because like, I didn't know, I had no idea that he had that. And he was, you know, a little uncomfortable, a little uh, self-conscious about it, I should say, and told me not to tell anyone about it. And I didn't, of course, I would never. And now he just pulls it out and, and doesn't just pull it out. We'll then continue for 10 more minutes without it on or in, I should say. Pretty incredible. Uh, what a legend. If you haven't seen the YouTube channel, check it out. The stuff is great. The production quality is great. Um, the takes are good. It's very entertaining stuff. And it's the, uh, it's the blueprint. You know, fighters these days are looking for ways to remain relevant, to make money. To, uh, to stay in the sport, to earn revenue. And I mean, he's putting out the blueprint. Now, Now every, we know that everyone isn't Michael Bisping or Daniel Cormier or Chael Sonnen, but still, I think there is a demand, there's a market because not enough people are doing it to hear from the fighters talking about the sport, talking about their career. And if you do it consistently, and if you do it on a regular basis with good production value, not you, you know, talking into a... Uh, a webcam and it's all grainy and you know it's all out of focus or anything like that you know you you put a little effort and tlc into it uh it it goes a long way 
And uh, I think that he has shown that. And, and the show I hear is fantastic. So I'm really happy for Michael Bisping, a guy who puts so much into the game. As you can see, there are battle wounds. There are things that he has to live with until his days are done. But uh, to see him get this love now, because I always knew him to be a very kind-hearted person, despite the fact that he's a little fiery and you know has uh, a bit of a temper at times, at least back in the fighting days, to see him get the love now, the support now, the, uh, the respect from everyone is, is a really great thing. So thank you very much to Mike. Uh, love having him on. It's always great to talk to someone with that much personality and energy and a man who's accomplished so much in the sport, who's doing such great things. Still, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm so happy that the UFC has um, expanded their roster of broadcasters to give people like Michael Bisping and Dominic Cruz and uh, Daniel Cormier and all these people um, an opportunity to... Uh, to be on the broadcast. All right, what's going on with Pewter? He was on, he was He was off. Got a little late. We got a little backed up there, uh, but hopefully we'll get him on. It's, it's late in Abu Dhabi, so I appreciate him doing this. Um, he's got a big fight coming up on Saturday, co-main event fight against uh, Corey Sanhagen, and uh, hopefully we could get him on here for just a couple of minutes. Uh, he's having trouble understanding. Okay. Um, all right. He should have his uh, his manager with him, who's his uh, translator, Sayat, who uh, speaks very good English. And of course, on Wednesday, we shall be back. Uh, on the Nose will be back. We'll uh, get some uh, insight from Mr. GC on the picks for this coming weekend. Another busy one in the world of MMA. We've got, uh, obviously, PFL on Wednesday, UFC 267. Uh, there's some one championship action if he wants to get involved in all of that. We've got their 10th anniversary show coming up as well. Uh, if he wants to dabble with CFFC, we could dabble with CFFC. All right, so uh, they are... The signal apparently is, isn't is great. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll figure this out. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to mention before we get to... And again, two title fights... Check out DraftKings Sportsbook. They've got this really great deal. What was it again? New customers can bet just $5 on either fighter and win $200 in free bets if they do. The two fighters fighting in the uh, in the main event, that's Glover Teixeira and Jan Bojovic. Light heavyweight title interim. And it's an amazing thing. Like I said, there is definitely a world where Jan wins this belt or excuse me, retains this belt in March against Aljamain Sterling. Corey Sanhagen fight, fights uh, TJ Dillashaw in July, and we're actually, the real title fight at 135 is Corey Sanhagen versus Piotr Jan for the undisputed belt. Instead, it's an interim title fight, but it's one of those interim title fights where I don't feel like uh, like it's a Fugazi title fight. I feel like this is a real title fight. You know, there was uh, obviously some some criticism, and I was one of those people who criticized it, of the Derek Lewis Surreal Gan fight. I don't feel like that's the case this time around. You know, the Derek Lewis Surreal Gan fight was an interim heavyweight title fight back in August, and that felt a little silly because Francis Ngannou just won the title back in March, and here we are five months later doing an interim title fight. And of course, we now know after Francis came on the show that, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot more to that, or there was a lot more to that. And of course, they just officially announced the, uh, the title fight, the undisputed title fight, the unification bout for January 22nd. And so this time around for this interim title fight. And there have been some other ones that have been a little more um, accepted and some other ones that have been a little more questionable. This one feels like a legit one. Like this feels like a two title fight card and uh, a fantastic card from top to bottom. Really looking forward to the return of Hamza Chemaev. We haven't seen him since September. Uh, we want to know September of last year. We want to know how he feels, how he looks, what kind of shape he's in, how are the lungs. Uh, remember he retired, he was spitting up blood and he's fighting, in my opinion, his toughest opponent. Li Zhangliang is not a cupcake. He's coming off a knockout victory over Santiago Ponzinibbio. 
back in January in Abu Dhabi on ABC. That was a big time win for the leech, the pride of China. This is not a cupcake fight by any stretch. I mean, I think a lot of people would have been okay given the fact that his first three fights were against, you know, lesser ranked opponents if the UFC booked him, him being Hamza Chimaev, given all they've invested in him against someone lower ranked than Li Zhang They didn't. Respect. That's a great fight. Really tough fight for Hamza. There's obviously a lot of intrigue. The Dan Hooker Islam Makhachev fight is like something out of a movie. Dan Hooker uh, just fought in late September. The visa stuff brings him to Las Vegas two days before the fight. The 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 New Zealand travel protocols tells him he has to go home or else. Makhachev's supposed to fight RDA. RDA can't fight. They call upon him. They're figuring it out. He doesn't know when he'll be able to come back home. He's in Las Vegas still. You see him. If you follow him on social media, you see him at Syndicate. You see him at Extreme Couture. You see him at all these places. And uh, it's just amazing to see him um, still wearing all the UFC gear and very proud of it. He's wearing the old school Reebok uh, fight kit. It's incredible. With a smile on his face, and apparently his family's going to meet him in Abu Dhabi and maybe come back to Las Vegas. And he's fighting one of the toughest guys, 20 and 1, Islam Makhachev, someone that a lot of people probably don't want to fight, the second coming of Khabib uh, Nurmagomedov. It's incredible. So that's on the card Sanhagen Yan and Glover and Jan Bachovic. Um, What's going on, Frankie? Can you give me an update over there or uh, anyone? Yeah, so Syed is in Russia. He is? Yeah. and They then, didn't tell me that. We, but they're in two different locations. Okay. So we're trying to coordinate both of them to be able to translate. Yeah, I just need you to stand by one moment. So is it going to be like one guy via Zoom and the other guy on the phone? Both will be on Zoom. Oh, really? Wow. How are we going to do that? We'll have one on the screen and the other one will be audio only. Oh, that's fun. Um, I hope they're not upset. Are they upset? No, everyone's a good. Messages are not going. Through. Oh, just there's um messages some messages are not going through between the two of them, so they're coordinating this. It's kind of difficult. Okay. Um, this is where we break the fourth wall. Well, why don't you call? Uh, I gave you uh, Danny's information over there. Uh, he can help coordinate some things. As uh, we'll well, we'll do that. Stand by. Um. Sorry about this. We were supposed to have uh, Peter earlier, and uh, they asked for us to go a little later. And so now uh, we're a little bit later, but it's getting late over there in Abu Dhabi. I think they're eight hours ahead of us, and so 4 p.m. Eastern time would be uh, 12 a.m. over in Abu Dhabi. But we'll get it done. We shall get it done. Do not worry. A lot of talk about Ioannia and Jacek and her being... Uh, off the uh, the rankings, Mike Bond reporting that uh, she was removed solely because... Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, Danny, Danny's texting me as we speak. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. I guess you were watching. Um, I guess it's due to inactivity, but she is not out of the game, not retired. Um, should we just get Danny on? Danny, do you want to just come on? and talk about things with all of us. One of the best managers in the game. What do you say? This is an interesting tweet here from uh, Aaron Bronstetter, who spoke to Dana White about Kayla Harrison. If I were her, or if I was her, I'd stay right where she is and keep picking off the people over there. I would stay there and keep fighting the type of women she's fighting there before I would come here and fight Amanda Nunes. That's for damn sure. That sounds like shade. And then PFL founder Don Davis just replied at Kayla Harrison's media scrum to paraphrase, he knows Kayla can beat Nunes and Cyborg, but that in the PFL... It's not about the promotion. It's about treating the fighters with respect and letting a meritocracy play out to prove who is best. Are they? Is, is there some some heat here? What's going on here? What is going on here? 
This is fun. I would guess that Dana's comment is uh, a form of negotiation. I would guess that he is trying to, in some respects, um, you know, just say like, hey, we're, I mean, why wouldn't anyone talk? I think Bellator should talk to her. I think uh, a fight between Kayla Harrison and Chris Cyborg would do massive business. I obviously think that the UFC should be interested in her because of her talent and because of the eventual Amanda Nunes fight. Obviously, PFL would be very smart to keep her around as well. Um, so I think it all makes total sense. Um, I think that putting that out there and saying that is just a form of negotiation. It's just a way of you know, saying, hey, we're not going to play the game of uh, trying to overpay you or getting into a bidding war with PFL or anything like that. Uh, you know, you're going to have to temper the expectations uh, when you come talk to us after this fight because I would be shocked if they're not interested in her. Absolutely shocked. There's no chance that they are not interested in her. No chance at all. If we were interested in some of the other guys from back in the day, the... Uh, the CM Punks of the world, the Kimbo Slices of the world, the, the 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 Greg Hardys of the world. I mean, and you're not interested in Kayla Harrison? Come on, Kayla Harrison. By the time this is all said and done, might go down as the greatest of all time, as far as women's MMA is concerned. She is that good and that motivated, has that much drive. She might go down. You're telling me they're not interested in her? Hogwash. All right, let's go to the Zoom machine and say hello to Piotr. Is he there? I don't know. Yes, Piotr. How are you? Everything good, brother. And uh, is Sayat there? Yeah, Sayat here. here. You're on the phone. Sayat, you my translator too. Sa okay. Uh, so, he, uh, Sayat, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, wonderful. I'm sorry about this, guys. Sorry about the connection problems, but your connection looks great, uh, Piotr. So thank you so much uh, for the time and for doing this late over there in Abu Dhabi. Um, all right, so there's a lot of interest in this fight. Uh, I think of the two title fights, this one is the more interesting, if you ask me, and that's no knock on the main event, guys, but I'm just really fascinated by this fight, and it's great to see you fight again. When you found out that Al Jermaine was out of the fight, what was your initial reaction? Bro, I want... I want... Говори, говори. Он считает, что из двух титульных боев это твой бой самый интересный, и какая у тебя была реакция, когда Стерлинг снялся? Да, реакция какая, в принципе, понятно. Конечно, хотелось вернуть свой пояс в реванше со Стерлингом, но все мы знаем, что он сбежал, как хитрый лис. Yeah, of course, I wanted to regain my belt uh, in a rematch with Sterling, but as we all know, he ran away like a sneaky fox. What, what were you going to say, Peter? You were about to say something, bro, and then you didn't say it. What were you going to say? <laughs> I can't, a little bit can't talk English. Yes. I understand what you told me. Mm. How do you feel? I understand your question. I, how do you feel so, about so Algebra Sterling? I feel good. Now I stay in Dubai. We hear... 12, maybe, ah, 14, maybe 16 days. Everything good. Tomorrow we go to Abu Dhabi. Что ты насчет Стерлинга думаешь, он спросил? Стерлинг is chicken, bro. I don't want to talk about him. Huh? Okay. Uh, what, just what, if I can ask one last question, was it deflating? Because it's so personal between you guys, because of how the fight ended, you were en route to winning, Initially, just for those initial moments, was it deflating for you, upsetting when you heard, I'm not going to get to resolve this issue with this man on October 30th? Последний вопрос насчет него. Именно потому, что между вами это стало каким-то личным конфликтом. Именно поэтому тебя сильно ли расстроило то, что ты не можешь поставить точку в этом конфликте в этот раз сейчас? Не, не личный. Никакого личного нету. Просто человек мог сделать свою операцию там и раньше давным-давно, либо позже, знаешь, но в такой ответственный момент взять и остановить весь дивизион, 
решил, что в данный момент ему нужно сделать это, знаешь, он просто решил конкретно там оттянуть время. Yeah, nothing personal. It's just, you know, his decision to make this surgery right now. I don't know why he haven't done it earlier or maybe later in his career. But and now he's like the so whole division in a mess. And uh, yeah, that's it. Когда, когда у людей болит шея, они разве стоят в спаррингах там без шлема, без какой-то защиты, не знаю, там еще чего-то? Что за yeah, глупость? When people have a neck pain, I don't see them sparring with someone without any headgear. You know, it's just ridiculous. If all goes well for you, Peter, on Saturday, you win this fight, you win the interim title. Will you consider yourself the champion again? Will it feel for you like you're the champion again? If everything goes to plan on this Sunday and you win the fight, will you consider yourself the real champion again? Тысячу процентов. One thousand percent. Okay, I understood that, obviously. Do you still consider yourself before the fight the champion? In your mind, do you think that you're still the champ because you weren't beaten? You were winning that fight. In all likelihood, you were en route to winning the fight. You were around and half away from winning the fight. Do you still consider yourself champion? Считаешь ли ты сейчас, сейчас себя чемпионом уже еще до боя с Энхэгеном, потому что ты выиграл бой со Стерлингом? И считаешь ли ты себя чемпионом сейчас? Ну, знаешь, так как пояса у меня нету, конечно, говорить, что я там считаю себя чемпионом. Я являюсь первым номером нашего дивизиона, и я докажу, что я лучше в этом дивизионе. You know, I don't want to consider myself as a champion. I don't have a belt right now. I'm the number one ranked bantamweight in the division, and I'm ready to prove that I'm the best in the division. Did it take you a long time to get over that night in March in Las Vegas? Because, uh, again, you, you weren't beaten. I, I would imagine it's something that annoyed you, right? Did it take you a long time to get over it, what transpired? Пришлось тебе... Много ли времени тебе пришлось, чтобы забыть ту ночь в марте, чтобы как-то преодолеть его? Ну, раздражали ли тебя эти события, то, что произошло? Ну... Стараюсь всегда как-то мыслить, что было, то было, а, и двигаться дальше. В принципе, что произошло, то произошло. Поэтому двигаемся дальше. Я не, на этом не планирую останавливаться. Впереди еще много поединков, поэтому сфокусирован уже на следующем своем бое за пояс. You know, I like to leave the past behind and not really focused on the past and just thinking about what's in front of me, what's in ahead of me. And I have a lot of, a lot of things to accomplish in, in the future, so I don't focus about the past. Все, что я потерял из-за этого пояса, как, это только деньги. Остальное все осталось также при мне. Желание завоевывать титулы. Я также голоден для побед. Поэтому все, что нужно, все при мне. You know, the only thing I lost is maybe money, but everything else is still with me. Desire to win the belts, desire to move forward to winning, uh, and I'm still hungry, so everything else is the same. Were you happy with the replacement choice, Corey Sanhagen, or were you hoping that someone else would step up? Доволен ли ты заменой в лице Сенхегена, или бы ты надеялся, что кто-то другой выйдет на замену? Нет, я не надеялся, что кто-то выйдет. Мы просто ждали, кто это будет. И, в принципе, из того, кто есть, Сенхеген, дело шоу, дрались крайне поединок, дело шоу травмирован. Поэтому UFC предложили Сенхегена, и мы согласились. No, I wasn't really hoping for anyone else, you know. Сен Хеген и Дилашо had a close fight, and Дилашо is injured, and UFC offered Corey, and I accepted it. Did you watch Сен Хеген Дилашо, and if so, do you think that Сен Хеген actually won the fight? Считаешь ли ты, что Кори победил в бою с Дилашо? Нет, я так не считаю. Он не победил в этом бою. No, I don't think so. I don't think he won that fight. Okay, you scored it for a Corey. I don't think the Corey won it. Yeah, был, очень, очень, был очень близкий бой, но он не выиграл в этом 
it was, it was a very very close fight but he didn't win that fight okay um what about sean o'malley he was very vocal about wanting to fight you did you believe him or did you think that he was just doing this you know as the kids say i don't know if it's a term over there in uh in russia the clout you know to gain some love from the fans как насчет э, Шона Омали? Считаешь ли ты, он действительно имел в виду, что хочет подраться с собой, либо он делал это ради как бы э, для фанатов, для привлечения внимания? Но в данный момент он делает это, он понимает, что ему никто не даст этот бой, и он просто как э, выскочка там пытается напомнить о себе, но он напоминает о себе только цветом своих волос, каждый раз меняет их. Больше ничем он не может удивить никого. You know, right now he knows he it's impossible for him to get this fight. So everything he says now is just for attention. It's just to be in media, you know. But you know, all the reason why he is in the media is only the color of his hair. <laughs> Because he does all the crazy hair color, the rainbow and stuff like that. Но только так он привлекает внимание своим каким-то там эмпатажным видом и своими разговорами. Больше ничего нету, дела от него нету. Он даже не в топ-10. Да, это основная причина, что он получает внимание, с его страшной хрящей, с его страшной говорящей. Он даже не в топ-15. I think, Пьотр, что ты один из самых неудачных трэш-токеров в ММА. Я думаю, что ты не получаешь достаточно кредитов. You've got some great lines. Do you enjoy this part of the game? You know, the build up, the back and forth, all this stuff, or does it annoy you? Он считает тебя одним из лучших трэш токеров в UFC в этой игре. И нравится ли тебе это, либо тебя это раздражает участие в таких перепалках словесно? Меня это не раздражает. Я нахожусь в том месте, где это нужно делать, поэтому мы это делаем. No, it doesn't annoy me at all. You know, I'm in the place where I have to do it, so I do it. What impresses you most about Corey Sanhagen? He's developed into a very well-rounded fighter. Initially, he wasn't throwing flying knees and the spinning, all this stuff, but now he's, you know, he's come a long way in that regard. I'm wondering, from your perspective, what impresses you most about him? Что тебя больше всего впечатляет в Сан-Хегене? То есть у него есть такие яркие финиши, ну и в целом он вырос как боец. Что тебя больше всего впечатляет в нем? Mm, он разносторонний боец, в принципе, он все умеет делать. Но в каждом аспекте, что он делает, я лучше него могу сделать это. В принципе, что в борьбе, что в ударке, я удивлю его. Uh, he's very good and versatile fighter, you know. He's good everywhere, but in every aspect, aspect that he's good at, I'm better than him. So, um, in wrestling or striking, I'm ready to surprise him. So, in your mind, uh, how do you see it playing out? Do you, do you expect this to be 25 minutes? Are you thinking it's going to end earlier? What are you envisioning? Как ты себе представляешь этот бой? Тебе говорю, будет полная дистанция, либо досрочная победа? Я надеюсь, что это будет досрочно. Yeah, I hope it's going to be early finish. You hope. Is that what you're feeling or is that what you just I mean everyone wants an early finish, right? But is that are you feeling this is going to be a a one-sided early fight or do you think he's going to take you to deep like what are you feeling in terms of what you're expecting from the fight? Как бы ты просто надеешься или у тебя какое-то предчувствие, что ты его досрочно победишь, либо он тебя затянет в глубокие воды. Мой стиль всегда идти за досрочной победой, а в глубокие воды я его только могу затянуть, а не он меня. Поэтому пять раундов — это моя дистанция. В принципе, я думаю, что бой не дойдет все пять раундов. You know, my style is always go there and look for the finish. And I don't think he's the one who can drag me into the de uh, deep waters. I'm the one who's going to dra drag him into the deep waters. And uh, five rounds is my distance. And it's very nice. You get to go back to Abu Dhabi. You had a great moment there with Jose Aldo two summers ago. So I'm, I'm assuming it's good memories for you, right? 
Отлично, что ты возвращаешься в Абу-Даби. Наверняка у тебя хорошие воспоминания связаны с этим местом. Да, Рель, ты же знаешь, что там уже есть один остров, Ян Айланд. И мы повторим это. As you know, you know, there is an island called Ян Айланд in Abu Dhabi. And you know, we're going to repeat the history. That's, that's, that's a good one. Yaz Island, Yan Island. You should, you should make a shirt. Do you have a shirt, Yan Island? Don't have. Maybe we'll, brother. Come on. Saya, Danny, make that happen. <laughs> you need to come out to the song Island Boy. You know the song Island Boy, everyone talking about it? You come out to that song on Saturday. You know this song, Saya, Island Boy? <laughs> yeah, I know this song. She probably doesn't. <laughs> Now, you know what I said? T tell him this, um, uh, Sayad. I, I said at the beginning of my show, if anyone walks out to the song Island Boy on Saturday, I will immortalize them in my studio, put their face on the wall forever. If anyone does this on Saturday, tell him that. Там сейчас uh, в интернете вирусная одна песня идет, Island Boy называется. И он говорит, если кто-то под эту песню выйдет, он говорит, его, со, эту фотографию этого человека у себя здесь в офисе повесит на стене огромную. И на всю жизнь будет она повесить. What do you think? Скажи, брат, от, от души ему скажи, но все нормально, скажи. Большого желания нет висеть у него всю жизнь в кабинете на фотографии. Thanks for the offer, Ariel, but he doesn't have a big desire for his pictures to be hanging out there. Oh, come on. This, these are the legends. Look at this. George St. Pierre, Demetrius, Daniel Cormier, Conor McGregor. You could be up. Fyodor. We have Fyodor right here. You know, I want to show you something. What, yeah, I know, I know, brother. Они все оказались там за счет своих выступлений, а ты хочешь, чтобы мы там оказались за счет того, что выйдем под музыку? You know, Ariel, they're over there because they achieved something in their career, not because they came out <laughs> for some song. <laughs> It's unfair. Okay. Um, but you're a legend. Last question for you, Pyotr. I just mentioned Fyodor. It was a great night on Saturday in Moscow seeing Fyodor Emelianenko come back and win. And I'm wondering for you, What did he mean to you? What did he represent? Like when you were growing up, did you look up to him as well? Was he one of your heroes? And what did it feel like to see him win on Saturday the way in which he did? Говоря о Федоре Емельяненко, у него была отличная победа в эти выходные. И что для тебя вообще значит Федор? Был ли он для тебя каким-то примером? Равнялся ли ты на него? Что ты об этом думаешь? Ну... Скажу так, что Федор — это легенда в нашем виде спорта. Он один из лучших тяжеловесов в мире. Вот. То, что сейчас он выступает в таком возрасте, конечно же, это и хорошо. Он делает для, там, так скажем, для спорта, для своей команды. Но и опять же, это большой возраст, и это очень жестокий спорт. Сегодня ты можешь выиграть, завтра ты можешь проиграть. Для меня Федор не был, так скажем, каким-то так скажем, приоритетом в спорте. Я не равнялся на него, потому что когда я занимался боксом, я увлекался только боксом. А когда уже я оказался в смешанных единоборствах, уже было другое поколение, другие ребята уже были. You know, Fyodor is a legend of our sport. He is uh, one of the best heavyweights, no doubt. And uh, you know that he is uh, still competing. I have mixed feelings because, you know, it's good. He's promoting this, this sport. He's doing good things for his team. He's pushing his team. But also, you know, our sport is very tough and dangerous. And, you know, it's dangerous to compete at this level at such an age. And for me personally, he, he wasn't my idol because uh, at first I was into boxing. So I was looking up to to some boxing athletes and when I switched to MMA uh, Ferro wasn't already uh, competing actively so oh. it's not like I was looking up to him yeah okay just curious who who did he look up to in boxing of boxing I caught around else uh, the camp slide no yes material not of a sort of take a torium Tyson Roy Jones Costa Zoo Mohammed Ali no no game on boxing который Блистали, Канела, Пакьяо, очень много боксов. Mm -hmm. Геннадий Головкин. Mm. I know those names. He was saying he looked up to those guys, right? Tyson, Costa Zinez, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lloyd Jones, yeah, yeah. Геннадий Головкин. Yeah, I got it. Exactly. Um, amazing. Well, Piotr, thank you so much for the time. 
Good luck to you. You know, sometimes sometimes they tell me you don't like me. I feel like you do really like me, Piotr. I don't know why people I did, say I did. Why they say that. <laughs> yes, tell me. What do you think about fight? What do you think about my next fight? Oh, you versus Corey Sanhagen? Yeah, I, I want to... You want my prediction? Hear. Yeah, your, your prediction. What, why, you, why do you ask me this? Why do you ask Интересно, просто интересно. I он же uh, аналитик, профессионал. Sure, sure. Uh, you, you want my You're analysis? Professional analytic. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think, I think, you think, I'm going to say Corey Sanhagen. In fact, I'll say, I think, you think I want Corey Sanhagen to win. Is that true? I don't want Corey Sanhagen. I don't root for anyone. I like you very much. I have no beef with you. Он говорит, ты ему очень нравишься, и он думает, что... Ты думаешь, что он скажет, что Кори победит, потому что Кори ему не нравится, ему нравится, но он типа не за Кори не, болеет. Не. Ему я наоборот нравится. хотел, я наоборот э, думал, что он как-то нейтрально отнесется, как знаешь, просто вот. Все, я no, понял его, я услышал его. Ариэль, everything good, bro. Thank you. You're the man. It's he, will. He was, it's, Ariel, it's he will was asking you. He want. was asking you. It's will how we want. I beat him in Saturday. Every guy will know who he really champ. I know, hey, I said you are the real champ. I think you got screwed uh, against Aljamain Sterling. I th I said before you came on, this in my mind feels like a real title fight. Sterling. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. Him. It wasn't He's good. Hey, Sterling doesn't mouse. like me too. Sterling doesn't like me because I said he didn't handle the situation very well in March. I've said this, and I think. Sanhagen actually won against TJ. So I think this is, in a weird way, the real title fight. Do you understand? Bro, Sterling Snake, Snake. Yes. yes. I, I understand what you're saying, but I have only respect, <laughs> and I think you got screwed. Uh, even prior to that, you should have been fighting for the belt earlier. And so I've only been a supporter over here. The Siberian gangster, I've been supporting you know, long before. So I don't, I, don't, I don't pick sides. We don't pick favorites here. A lot of respect. Is that, does, he, does he understand what I'm saying? Он говорит, что изначально говорил, что ваш бой с Кори – это настоящий бой титульный, потому что он считает, что Кори выиграл дело шоу, а с тобой несправедливо поступили в бою с Стерлингом. И что он изначально всегда за тебя тоже топил, поддерживал тебя, и что это настоящий титульный бой. Все отлично, отлично. Все. Везде Газани скажи так, что так оно и есть. Yeah, exactly. So... He's uh, on board with you, and he was actually saying uh, that he was asking you because he thought you as a professional will have a neutral. Так и говори, Ariel, так и говори всегда, что это бой за настоящий титул. So Ariel, just keep saying it's real title fight. It is like real title, you, like you did. Before. It was real. This is a real title fight, in my opinion. It's not an interim title fight. I think when you, you know, if all goes well for you, you win on Saturday. I'm curious what they're going to do. Are they going to try to do you versus TJ or you versus Aljo? Because I don't know. TJ thinks Aljo's never going to fight again. He thinks that he's done. So I don't know. Do you have a preference? Do you want to fight Aljo or do you want to fight TJ after this? Он говорит, если все пройдет хорошо, ты выиграешь. Он говорит, даже не знает, что будет дальше, что сделает UFC. Это будет реванш с Серлингом, либо это будет бой с TJ Дилышом. Дилышо говорит, что Серлинг вообще больше никогда не подерется. Чего ты сам хочешь? I know, I know, uh, I don't know what will next. Maybe it will Sterling, maybe it will deal a show. I don't want to fight with Sterling. He's chicken. He's not good, not good guy. I won't fight maybe with your show. Okay. I thought you were uh, going to say something. Um, well, I have a lot of respect for you, Peter. Good luck to you on Saturday. We'll see how it all plays out. Uh, it would be nice to get a resolution to the issue with you and Sterling, but I can understand why you feel this way, and uh, we'll worry about that on Sunday. If all goes well on Saturday, you come back on the show on Monday, and we'll talk about it, okay? okay. Maybe, bro. Oh, maybe. <laughs> 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 All right. Спасибо. Maybe I will have. Спасибо. Bye bye. No, what do you want to say? What did you want to say? Maybe you'll have. Oh, maybe after fight, after fight, I will have relaxed time with my family. Huh. Two months, I don't have time with my family. Yes. 
No, I understand. It was long time camp. We will see 100%. Okay, my friend. Uh, all the best. Spasiba. Good luck to you on Saturday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Sayat, thank you very much as well. You're great. Yeah, thank you, Ariel. All right. And uh, try to make the push for the uh, the song. If I mean, I'm just saying it would be a nice moment. He comes out. Island boy. Island boy. Wow. Okay. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a poll on the YouTube channel right now. A lot of people are, um, are debating this right now. There's a debate going on on the YouTube channel. What's the better song? Island boy or face the pain currently 418 votes. And, uh, it appears as though Island boy is winning by 53%. Will someone do it? Will someone pull it off? Listen, these fights are great, but I think we've created, you, you know, Listen, there are some people who like say we don't promote the sport, we don't promote the brand, we don't promote the fights, we don't promote the events. I would say that we have raised the level of interest going into Saturday, UFC 267, to find out if anyone, will it be Corey Sanhagen? We found out, we just found out, breaking news, we found out, put it on all your uh, your Instagram feeds, your Twitter feeds, Peter Dion has declined the opportunity to walk out to Island Boy. Kayla Harrison has also declined. Just for the record, I didn't ask uh, Clarissa Shields. I I, uh, I dropped the ball. But will it be Hamza Chemaev? Perhaps it will be Li Zhanglian. Maybe Magomed Ankalaev. Maybe Volkan Ozdemir. We don't know. Perhaps it will be Makwan Amir Khani or Larone Murphy. But we will work on this and we will get back to you. And perhaps we'll have an update on this developing situation come Wednesday. Fun day in the books. Uh, I appreciate everyone. A really fun day. This day has been uh, amazing. But it is time to say goodbye. I'm very sweaty because uh, I thought Piotr, you know, I felt like there was some some stuff that we needed to work out. I'm not quite sure if we worked it out, but I feel I feel a little bit better about things right now. So without further ado, Frankie, you can hit the music. It's time to go. I know you guys want me to sit here and just basically, uh, you know, talk to you for the next five, six, seven hours. But, you know, I have things to do. I have to go to my son's football game. Yesterday, actually, no, Wednesday, uh, I was late because the game was at 6, and the traffic coming home was so bad that I missed his game. And my oldest son likes sports but isn't hardcore into sports. I get there. He's playing flag football. I get there, and my wife tells me that he scored a touchdown. I was like, what? He scored a touchdown? They hardly ever throw him the ball. And someone recorded it, and I wanted to post this, but I didn't want to be that guy. It was a short route, like literally a two-yard route, and he ran 80% of the field, not 80 yard, 80% of the field, bowled over a guy like Marshawn Lynch back in the day and took it to the house. I must have seen that clip now at this point. I must have watched it a thousand times. One of the proudest moments of my life. And so I urge any parent out there, if you have a young kid, like young, like I'm talking six months, there are some great moments coming. If your kids get into sports, I mean, the joy that I get watching them play football, soccer, it's just an amazing thing. I don't know how I got down this road. All I want to say is I'm looking forward to the game tonight. And I also want to say thank you very much to all our guests. Thank you very much to Clarissa Shields. Thank you very much to Kayla Harrison. Thank you very much to Kevin Lee. Thank you very much to Michael Bisping. And of course, thank you very much to Piotr Jan, the unofficial, the king without a crown. I should have called him that. Bantamweight champ. Peter Jan, thank you very much. And thanks to you. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. I'm out of here.